Hey guys, how's it going? It is 2021. We survived 2020. Congratulations to all of us for, for doing so in such a uh, interesting time. And we are here with a brand new episode of your favorite podcast and mine, Suwama Station. I am here with my buddy Matt. Say hi, Matt. Hello, everyone. I hope you all had a great holiday and we did it. We survived 2020. And I hope we never look back again. Yes, I couldn't have said that any better myself. And so having said that, we have an awesome episode for you today or whenever you're listening to this. And we hope you are subscribed to the podcast on our YouTube channel. Just go out and find us. We're All Japan Worldwide Fan Group. We have a couple episodes already uploaded. We're hoping you uh, have taken a look to some of our previous works. And as soon as we hit 100 subscribers, we're actually going to drop all of our interviews that we've done over the past couple of years. As I've explained before, we previously were under a different name, Uncle June's Junction, and things have changed since Uncle June has uh, absconded off to DDT land. And so he is, uh, he will be missed, and he is definitely a legend in all Japan, but we're, we're a show kind of focusing on the future, just overall of all Japan, and Suwama is a, a big fixture of all Japan. Uh, over the last, you know, the the 2000s, 2010s, and the 2020s now. And so we are uh, very glad that you are with us and you are listening. And as I mentioned, we hope you're subscribed as well as uh, through our Spotify as well through the Chair Shot Radio Network. We want to give a shout out to Chair Shot Radio Network for hosting us on Spotify. They have a bunch of awesome other killer uh podcasts related to wrestling related to you know off kilter things and it's it's a good time uh, one of our old buddies andrew balaz he still is working with chair shot on various projects as well as our, our pal val out there in france and so we are very happy to be a part of that family and we hope that you are just enjoying the show in whichever format you're listening to it on now one thing I want to talk about real quick is the fact that we are always looking for contributors. We're always looking for new uh, folks to, to jump in and throw their two cents to you know, talk to us to sort of, uh, you know, get involved with the podcast. And so if you're interested and you're out there, you know, we would be very happy to have you come on board and talk with us, you know, talk all Japan, past, present, and future. That's what we're here for. And the show is only going to get better from here. We're going to have more awesome guests, more awesome interviews, more awesome segments. And we're really hoping that you, some of the listeners, are maybe kind of itching to get involved in the, the mix of things. And so we very much uh, want to send out an invite, an open invite to all of you who are looking to want to maybe, you know, get your foot into the pool. So, uh, yeah, we just wanted to, to start the show off with that and say, you know, uh, well, just to say that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started with the news. I believe I will let uh, Matt, would you like to go ahead and take on the, the news that we've got for the listeners to open this episode, the brand new, the very first episode of 2021 open up? Absolutely. Let me uh, pull this up right here. We got a lot of news for you today. Uh, Shuji Ishikawa will be going to JTO on January 15th as he will be wrestling Ren Ayabe. So that should be fun. If JTO is a nice uh, small promotion. Again, a lot of attraction lately, so this will be good. Especially with someone like Shuji being there having a match. Uh, also, we have an update on the Joshi division of All Japan called Evolution, which will be taken charge by Suwama. And we'll have uh, Ice Ribbon uh, scouting for talent and helping out the best they can. So there's that little alliance there for the both of them. So that would be good. Uh, what do you think about that? The fact that we actually might get women in All Japan, like their own division? Well, I... I... You know, 
I've seen some some outlets break the story as All Japan will have a women's division, and I, I don't really see it that way. Um, I think that you have a, a line that you can tow, and the line will be more than likely it will have some sort of fashion where maybe Evolution or uh, F. Fon Terrible will host a show. And the women's matches will be on there in a mix of talent. Kind of looking a bit like, you know, K-Dojo. Or I suppose uh, it's uh, 2AW now. But, uh, yeah. but, but, but K-Dojo in, uh, in Japan was a very big fixture of having mixed matches. Having women, women's matches and men's matches. And then having some talent kind of mix up a little bit here and there. Now, it's not to say... They're, they're one of the first, right? Because obviously there, there's a history back. You know, War was working with the various groups. Um, like, uh, I think it get Gaia? Ga Gaia? I forget what the name of the, the promotion is. But, Africa Gaia? Yes, like that. yes. And, and so it, it's it's been a thing for a while. But K-Dojo really kind of hammered that message home because it was, a, it was supposed to be a mirror of WWE to Japan, right? And, and Taka, yeah. Taka above anybody else would know what that formula is like because he'd been over there for a while. And so he was very influenced by the product. Uh, again, I want to kind of go with uh, uh, back to the, the first item on the, 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 the news topic, which was that Shiji Ishikawa is working on Just Tap Out. Now, for folks that don't know about Just Tap Out, it is a, it is a breakaway in, in, a, in a sense of of a uh, uh, K Dojo when the K Dojo split happened with Taka basically being shown the door out and 2AW sw becoming 2AW from K Dojo to sort of reflect that splintering of the participation the the association of Taka Michinoku who is a former All Japan wrestler and uh, foreign booker and so uh, just tap out is a Taka Taka Mishinoku produced promotion. He is the, the main guy. He is the, the fixture of that promotion as well. And uh, they unfortunately just suffered some bad news themselves as their top prospect, the uh, uh, former Wrestle 1 heavyweight champion over in Zero One, uh, Hayato Tamura, he actually announced that he is on his way out. He will be finishing up his obligations in the end of the month and will he will not he will no longer be assigned talent to them and it's a huge blow to them because he's arguably one of the standouts of the promotion they had been pushing him very hard and so <clears throat> my guess would be that they're sort of hemorrhaging and they're having some problems and Shuji Ishikawa is willing to step in there and sort of be a bridge to sort of you know to 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 bridge that gap and if All Japan starts working with Just Tap Out, I, I would not be surprised on that one. But back to the the the, um, the Joshi division of uh, working with All Japan. I mean, if it happens, I, I do think that there will be some blowback in the sense that um, All Japan has never really been much for having women's matches on their shows. And... That's just the, the, the rank and file. That's just the packing order, how things go. Now, I'm not adverse to change. I think that All Japan may not be adverse to change. But if it doesn't happen, if it happens on like a sideshow or a special show, I could see that because they've done those kind of things before. And so that's kind of like how I see it. They won't directly be on All Japan shows. And if they are... It might be like a, a super show, sort of like how I believe a Stardom, right? Stardom just had a couple of matches over Wrestle Kingdom with right. New Japan, right? So that might be the road that they go on, which is if they get a really big show, like uh, say, for instance, they get something bigger than, than Currican Hall, that they might, you know, they might stack the deck with you know, two Joshi matches and that, you know, that would be okay. Uh, on top of that, we should mention that uh, Hikaru Sato, he is a, you know, he loves, you know, uh, uh, being a goofball and he has no problem sort of just being himself and he's a bit of an oddball. And lately he's been posing in pictures in uh, women's outfits and he's also been working uh, some mixed matches working against women 
as well. And so I would not be surprised if Sato got in the mix of that. He is a part of Evolution, so that kind right. of fits like a hand in glove. As I say, like Suwama, this is something like Suwama wanted for a while. And the fact that he's actually again trying to get this on the ground shows that he is confident to do this. And again, if he's that confident and he thinks it'll work, I don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, if he is behind it. And again, you have Ice Ribbon, which is probably the best Joshi promotion there right now, next to uh, Stardom and stuff like that. And they have a great talent pool. And they help them out. They help train women. And we get to see these women showcase on a bigger platform. I think it's a win-win. Yeah, um, I, I, I do think that it would help in bringing in a new new audience to All Japan, I suppose. But at the same time, I've, I, I've seen it uh, firsthand, not being there, but I've talked with folks that have gone to All Japan shows where uh, this was not very far back, maybe a year or two ago, where Uncle June allowed a women's match on the card. And I've, I've had people tell me they, that if that happened again, they probably would stop watching All Japan because it's just it's not an All Japan thing. They want an All Japan product. And let's face it, historically, All Japan has not been wanting to mingle with uh, women with Joshi wrestling. And I understand that, which is why I was saying and, and why they're having a club of evolution, because then if Suwama on his own is hosting these shows and is doing these things vis-a-vis -vis from All Japan, I see that being much more of a potential thing because, you know, as you've mentioned, Suwama has definitely been a proponent for having this happen. And Suwama is definitely passionate to have, you know, All Japan, uh, uh, to have women in the mix somehow. And so if he's able to do it sort of off on his own, booking his own shows. And we've seen Evolution shows before, too. And so it's not, it's not out of the realm that he just kind of does it off on the side. They don't necessarily make it onto an All Japan proper card. But if Evolution hosts a show... You know, special evolution show, Suwama versus Sato, things like that. Then it, I could see that. I could see that. Uh, also, we have found out that they uh, helped finance a movie. Do you have info on that for All Japan? I we 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 talked about this uh, a, a little while back. I actually I was having a hard time finding out the name of the title of the movie. Uh, this is something we're probably going to have to edit in later. Uh, I was kind of hoping you had a bit more information on it, but um, I, I didn't get a chance to look. <laughs> yeah, we're we're both going to have to work on that. So All I right. guess we'll have to just. I'll I'll go in and edit that later, and just I'll I'll speak on it. But yeah, uh, I'll say. And then we have a uh, seven for the battle archive. We have Hiroshi Tanahashi against Great Muto from Champion Carnival two thousand eight which was a huge match at the time, seen as the old and new. For, like, the as Tanahashi was the new ace of New Japan, take it on Mudo. Then we also have Kat Hayashi and Kiji Mudo to fight in 2010 when, for the Junior Heavyweight Championship, as Mudo was the first to person to be a former Triple Crown Champion to challenge for the Junior Heavyweight Championship. Yes. Um, so, to give some context, 2008... At the beginning of the, the year, Tanahashi did not sign a contract and as they norm, as, as New Japan wrestlers normally do. And so Tanahashi was teasing an angle where he was threatening to come over to All Japan and become sort of the big deal. And this did not get over very well with the, the All Japan crowd. You know, they, they saw him just as a New Japan guy as a, a heel and this is the closest that Tanahashi has come to being a heel in Japan and so during his matches he was just a bit more smug and a bit too too over the top to really be seen as the Tanahashi he had been in New Japan the last few years and so uh, one thing that has been uh, talked about by Tanahashi, they, they've been doing series of interviews uh, over in New Japan, and Tanahashi has been talking about the whole 
the there is a time period where guys like Kenzo Suzuki and Tanahashi and Blue Wolf and Makabe and they're coming up and they're all being mentored by guys. They're all being mentored by established wrestlers and Tanahashi wound up being the the attendant, the the trainee, the direct pupil if you will under Keiji Muto. Now this is 99 2000 and so by this time Muto is already he's already basically packing his bags to head over to WCW. So Tanahashi had limited exposure to Muto. Now, that's not to say Muto didn't have a hand in rearing him as a wrestler and working with him and training him and obviously uh, Tanahashi has gotten the rub from Muto. You know, you can see a lot of similarities between the two. They're both, you know, I want to say ageless wonders, but that's giving Muto just a little bit too much credit because he's he's clearly physically, you know, broken down pretty good. Tanahashi slowly getting there if he doesn't, you know, take a year off and take a break. But the guy loves he's to never work. gonna take yeah. a break. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, Tanahashi and Muto meeting up in the Champions Carnival 2008. Is a huge match. It's a it's sort of a changing of the guard. Uh, only a previous couple of years back, did you see Muto uh, as IWGP Heavyweight Champion one more go around, right? One more go around, and nobody right. suspected that. And so this is sort of the the handing off of the torch of the 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 dragon system because you know tanahashi adopted that dragon system sort of style using the dragon screw leg whip and using that sort of style that muto was akin to back in his prime so that that is why it's such a huge match is because they had not really they had not had that show off that that face off yet between the two of them the in, in uh in a it's time to pass the torch kind of thing because Muto had won the title back not too long before then. And so you can't really hand off the title. You can't hand off the torch if you're still an element in the the, the lineage of New Japan, which Muto right. ultimately was. Now, as far as the junior heavyweight title match between Muto and Hayashi, I'd like to give a little more context. Hayashi is a huge, huge fanatical uh He's a devout, uh, you know, follower uh, of Muto and loved Muto's work and is a huge fan. And they met up in WCW 2000. And Muto had spent a little bit of time working with the Young Dragons, which Kaz Hayashi was a fan of or was a part of, right. excuse me. <laughs> and so when the time came for Hayashi to have his contract absorbed by WWE, they did not send him to OVW. They sent him to HWA, which is Heartland Wrestling Association. And he did not want to go. He did not want to be there. And so Keiji Muto, he's basically in 2002, beginning of 2002, he has defected from New Japan to go over to All Japan. He's got Kendo Kashit with him. I said Kashit. You heard me. And he <laughs> also... Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and he brought Kojima with him. And one of the first things he does is he gets on a phone and he calls Hayashi and he says, I've got an out for you if you're ready to take it. And so Hayashi came to All Japan and there's a there was a picture in of Muto and Hayashi at the airport, you know, Muto greeting Hayashi saying like, welcome back to Japan. And Hayashi became the the instrumental junior heavyweight for the next you know, 10, 11 years for all Japan, just the, he was the man in the division, you know, uh, uh, you know, he, he lost the title, won the title, lost the title, won tournaments, whatnot, but arguably he is the gold standard of junior heavyweight wrestling for all Japan for many years to come. So at this point in time, uh, Hayashi is, is working with Muto. He's teaming with Muto. And, uh, there is a time where, Kaz starts dressing up like Keiji Muto of the time, of 2002, 2003. And so Hayashi is just really big on Muto. And Muto, you know, is he is a, a very good at having a pro wrestling mind. Very good at, at promoting, 
very good at, at, at you know being a, a showman i suppose is what i'm looking for the word i'm looking for and so all japan is looking for a way to sort of really kind of you know muto's been around for about nine years now uh the first year of course he's not signed but he still is triple crown heavyweight champion he's still working tours he's still around but uh you know by 2010 the the act's gone in a little stale so it's like what do we do to sort of freshen up muto and so muto comes out and says i'm gonna challenge kaz hayashi for the junior heavyweight title because it's a title i haven't won yet in all japan so they link up in a very unique very special match and kaz even actually goes out of his way if i'm not mistaken to dress up as 90s uh keji muto in new japan and it's a very fun match it's a very very cool you know to see them because it's again sort of a, a meeting of the old and the new because kaz is kind of trying to screw with muto's head and being like hey look at me i'm i'm you i'm the young you you know from the 90s right it's it's a very good match i would go out of my way to watch it ajpw.tv that's how you want to be watching your All Japan. You want to subscribe. You want to head over. You want to get yourself in on the action so you don't miss out on any of the live shows. All right. And also we have some uh, dates for the next tour in February for the uh, Excite Series. Uh, one of them is uh, February 18th in Shinkiba First Ring. Uh, February 20th. Nagoya International Conference Hall. And then the next day, February 21st, in Kira Mese Numazu. And then finally, February 23rd at Korokan Hall. So I, I get, we're going to assume that's where the next Triple Crown defense will be at the Korokan Hall. So that's where they normally are. Yeah. I would take that kiss. Alrighty, but yeah, those are those, and uh, should we get to the review, the results from the shows that we have not covered? Actually, the th actually, th there's one more piece that we didn't go through, which is that um, All Japan held tryouts on the 13th of their show at, back in December at Kirken Hall of tr 12 potential applicants for the All Japan Dojo, and... It took them about a month to figure out, a uh, little, little under a month actually, to get about three weeks. Get to, yeah, to get it sorted out on who they were going to select. Now, Atsuki and Yuma were doing the talent scouting of the dojo, and for some of the some of you who are not in the know, right now as it stands, Tajiri is actually running the All Japan Dojo, which is a large part of why All Japan selected. Tajiri to be a full-on member of the roster, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Now, the out of the four that were selected, we've got three heavyweights. Three, which is I'm 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 so happy about that because All Japan has had a real issue with getting some proper heavyweights. No knock to Tamuda. He's probably gonna get there eventually. Uh, but the 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 four that were selected were Dio, Dio Inoue, a junior heavyweight, Dioma Sukamoto, who is a shorter heavyweight, and the Saito brothers, Jun and Re. Now, Jun and Re would be seen, they are, you can see them on the January 2nd and January 3rd shows as ring attendants, and it is a very sizable difference between them and and the current most of the current all japan roster and so this is you know is a welcome sight so it was a little a little off uh it caught me off guard at first just to see how much bigger they are compared to everybody else but from what i understand they were they were trying to work on being sumo and so right. that would kind of make sense why they're they're bigger guys you know because sumo you want to have a big frame that's why somebody like akebono was just an absolute beast because akebono is a very very tall guy and then he just widened his frame and you know uh speaking of which we hope that you know akebono is doing good health wise i hadn't actually heard anything about him for a while former no, tri tri triple crown heavyweight champion former all asian and uh, world tag team slash double cup tag team champion 
we we hope that he is feeling good. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I just um yeah, I haven't heard anything from him either, and I hope he is doing well. And uh, as for the four that made it, congrats on them making it. So I hope they do well in their experience, and that'd be just about it. Like, good luck to them for their training. Yes. So why don't we start with the the show in December that we didn't get a chance to talk about, and then we'll the work our way show? back. Yes. All right. What day was that? Was that the uh, 17th? The 13th. The 13th. That's right. AJP Prime Night. Here we go. Took place uh, December 13th at Corican Hall with 677 people in attendance and it's also on AllJapan.tv. Uh, opening match, we had Tajiri defeating Akira Francesco. And then the next match, uh, six-man tag, Purple Haze, Izanagi Utamoro and Zeus defeating Koji Iwamoto. Masanobu Fuchi and Ryuki Honda. And then our next singles match, Jake Lee defeated Asuki Aoagi. Next, uh, another singles match, Shotaro Oshino defeating Dan Tamora. And then we have the inaugural All Japan Six Man Television Championship match, where Black Menzore, Kara Ito, and Tako Omori defeated Daimanji So. Revlon and Ryuji Sai to win the titles as their first set of champions. Uh, next match, Kohei Saito defeats Hokuto Omori. And then we get six-man tag action with of uh, Unchained, Jun Kutsai, Kenji Fukimoto, and Masashi Takeda defeating Chikara, Yoshitatsu, and Yusuke Okada in Okada's final match. And after that, Jun Kusai challenged Yoshitatsu for the television championship. And then our main event, Sima, Kento Miyaharo, and Yuma Aoyagi defeat Evolution. And that'd be about it for that. Um, this is the, the, also the prelude before the big tag title match coming up on January 2nd, which we're going to talk about here. Uh, this this was a nice show, for the, especially for uh, Amazon Prime. I'd like to get down the ground uh, against Sima there, and I hope it leads to more strong hearts in all Japan in the next year. Uh, curious how June and Yoshi's gonna go. And for Yusuke Okada, I wish him luck on his next adventure. You know he's not all Japan anymore. And congrats to Black Men's Array on winning a title with the six man. Uh, what'd you think? Well, uh, a couple of things here. So, uh, first, it, it was not for Amazon Prime. This is not the Amazon Prime show. Okay, it's not. Yeah, it is not the Amazon Prime show. It's compl- This is a totally different lineup. And so they were just calling it Prime Night, as in, like, you know, prime time. And so, right. yeah, let's go ahead and get that one uh, cleared up right away. So okay. th- th- so that th- there's that. So first thing, um, Tajiri and Francesco Akita, their relationship of sort of a fatherly son kind of friendly rivalry continues. Now, Francesco Akita, he has been chasing after a win for Tajiri because he wants to get another shot at that. EWA Intercontinental title that Tajiri is still holding on to. Tajiri last defended it against Udamaro, and I would have to think that Francesco, if he's not due in for a junior heavyweight title reign, he'll probably get that EWA Intercontinental title match. Francesco Akita definitely on the bubble of being, I would say, advancing as far as the file and rank of the junior heavyweight division, which you know Tajiri is still a member of. Now I want to get over to the um, the six man tag the semifinal, uh, which is uh, Takeda, Kasai, and Fukumoto f- that primarily work out of uh, freedoms. At least Fukumoto and Kasai do going over Tatsu, Okada, and Shikata. Now it was a very heartfelt affair for two reasons. One because Kasai comes back to working in All Japan. It had been a little while for him. Really big fan of Kasai. He's a lot of fun to watch. Fukimoto, there's no doubt he's not fun to watch. He is definitely fun to watch. But obviously, he's a bit more geared towards the death match. And Masashi Takeda, who I'm a huge, huge fan of, he, at the same time, I, I, I wish he would work more outside of death match 
matches. I mean, you know, he's he's done a fair amount, but he he does seem pretty happy being a deathmatch guy. But he he just really turns it on when he is just working a, a straight up match, and I'd love to see more of that in all Japan this year. Masashi Takeda and Aizanagi have a relationship. They're really good friends, and that's why um, Takeda will show up in the junior tag the junior uh tag battle of glory which we actually didn't put in the 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 agenda but i will go in and put it in myself uh just pick a little note here but at the same time okada's last match in all japan i mean he really turned it on you know i i think he gave it you know quite the the push of the pedal uh, on the gas and it's just, it's a real shame that he's leaving all japan but you know life is just strange like that you know, uh, right. I, I will miss him. I really will. Um, it, it seems as though it's just one of those things where he just, you know, got lost in the shuffle. And All Japan, a admittedly, isn't in a position to lose, you know, young, talented guys like Okada. You know, I, I will be blunt and say it was, it's, it's, it's awful. It's a damn shame. We talked about this last episode, and so I didn't want to go, you know, go, you know, too much into it. But um, yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what happens in Okada's career and hopefully they do not stick him in a ton of comedy matches wherever he goes because you know while he can do comedy I think he's much better off as a a straight up uh, a pro wrestler but anyways the the match before this Kyohei Sato makes a return to all japan he'd been away for some time actually if I'm not mistaken and he right. gets a, a win over Hokuto Omori and he is somebody who is I would definitely say he has the potentiality of being a, a big somebody in 2021. He's a former world heavyweight champion in zero one, former NWA intercontinental tag team champion numerous times in zero one, uh, has won numerous fire festivals, is one half of the tag team, the Twin Towers. With Shuji Ishikawa, they have had uh, success over in BJW. Kyo Sato working the strong division over in BJW. And so Ishikawa and Sato, if they reunited in 2021, I would not be shocked because, you know, they, they just, they're, they're a very dominant team. And so they, they might stick them back together. It's very difficult to say at this point in time. And also, I wanted to point out that uh, Sima, who has not worked in all Japan in almost uh, 20 years, he shows up in the main event. And it was very interesting to see Sima in a all Japan ring because he's practically worked everywhere besides all Japan. Uh, he was working... Uh, Strong Hearts were uh, established in Wrestle 1 for some time and so it's very interesting to see if that relationship has any ramifications for all japan and another partner which we again we've talked about in previous episode and we don't know what the full outcome of that is now the the prime special that all japan uh filmed uh masaki mochizuki from dragon gate actually showed up and so it's very hard to tell if and uh, when Dragon Gate will sort of curtail their participation with All Japan. We can't really take any assumptions, I think, at this point. But SEMA working All Japan, if it doesn't screw up the relationship with Dragon Gate, can almost certainly be a good thing. Now, what's funny is, is that SEMA is actually going to try to break out as a heavyweight. He's going to challenge Masato Tanaka... For the world heavyweight title on the 20th anniversary zero one show which i I'm not, not, yeah, I'm not really sure what to make of that but you know hey i'm i'm not a booker and so it's not really for me to 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 say but you know i just kind of found that um interesting <laughs> we'll leave it at that we will leave it at oh, that. Again, they're everywhere, so if they're as long as they show up and they're big names, they draw a crowd. They're gonna get those type of matches. That's yes. all I can really say about it. Yes. In fact, why don't we talk about the 
the Junior Tag Battle of Glory just real quick, and then I'll, I'll stick it in there. So um, here is the here's what's going on with that. So rather than All Japan use their resources to to film the show, to book the talent, to get a partner to help produce it and finance it, Hikaru Sato, who is ever the awesome guy, he right. sort of put it on his shoulders and he said, I'm going to quarterback this thing, which is funny because Japan doesn't have football. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he goes and he says, I will go and make this thing happen. And so he goes and he 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 gets with Nico Pro, who is a distributor of Japanese programming, uh, Jap Japanese online programming, like video on demand stuff. And Nico Pro works with a lot of Joshi wrestling promotions. Works with a couple of other wrestling promotions. They air uh, quote unquote pay per views for different groups like Just Tap Out, what we were talking about, like Zero One. And so they had the Junior Tag Battle of Glory on nico pro so if you had a subscription to nico pro or if you i i think you need more than a subscription to get a pay for stuff too on top of uh having a, a subscription um, i think yeah i think you do i'm not sure i'm trying to figure out how it works still so right so um we had the 2020 battle of glory and i'm just gonna go through it real fast now a couple of things i should note is that because of the the resources sort of limited uh by the the participation of certain wrestlers and the sponsorship and just overall covid uh taking the precautions of covid the rules of the tournament were changed up this year and normally you would see all japan host this thing and it would just be you know your regular set of standard tag matches however it came out a few weeks before the the tournament was held on the 27th at Shinkaiba that these will have special rules to deal with time limits now the time limit was set for 10 minutes per matches and if i'm not mistaken anybody who made over 10 minutes was automatically uh i believe automatically eliminated except for the semifinals so right. if, once they got into the semifinals, the 10 minute rule was not in effect. But before then, in the first round, the, the, I think the it's based on weight. Yeah, what was that? I think it was based on a weight decision for the semifinal. Was it? Okay. So uh, on the on the first round, now uh, we should mention that everything was done with the two count rule for some strange reason. I I don't quite understand it myself. So they didn't have to get a three count on these bouts. But I'm going to go through it real quick. Hikado Sato and Dan Tamura got the win over Yu Izuka and Tutsuya Izuchi of Heat Up uh, when uh, Sato used the backdrop on Izuchi at 731. Now, Izuka just got signed to a contract to Gleet, and congratulations to him because I'm sure he's happy to be in a, a bigger promotion than uh, Heat Up, which is a fairly small operation, but they're very talented, great group of, of wrestlers. Except, in that. For that, uh, except for that guy who got arrested. <laughs> which guy? Uh, Joe Otani, what was his name? The one with the underage girl? Hmm. I'm not sure. His name. I, I know I did a piece out of and then on, like, he on, had and this, he's a heat up? year old girl, and then they're like, eh, slap on the wrist, don't do it again. Uh, heat up, though? Yeah, it was oh, heat up. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, in the other first round action, we had Hokuto Omori and Yusuke o uh, Kodama from Infanterible. They went up against Aizanagi and Masashi Takeda. We were just talking about them being really good friends. And Aizanagi, in a quote-unquote previous life, was Atsushi Mariyama. And he and Masashi Takeda won the tournament not too long ago themselves. But Omori used a cross arm breaker on Aizanagi for the win at 508. Koji Iwamoto and Fuminori Abe, really good friends, even better rivals. They teamed up to get the win over Francesco Akira and Takeyuki Ueki at 715 when Iwamoto used a German suplex hold on Akira. Now, I just want to give a little context for this real quick. Ueki was not supposed to be the tag partner. For uh, uh, Francesco, I'm sorry. My apologies. Francesco Akira was not supposed to be the tag partner. Uh, originally, <laughs> let me let me redo that. 
Neither one of them, I believe, was... Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to go on record and I'm going to say Akita was not originally scheduled to be in this tournament. It was supposed to be Yusuke Okada taking the place of Francesco Akita because Ueki and Okada had a very short-lived tag team based on the fact that they both used to be the formerly policemen. And so Francesco Akita was wanting to be in the tournament, and, except that he was under the belief that he was going to fly back home to Italy by then, which he has not been able to because, again, of COVID concerns. And so Francesco Akita wound up getting to work the tournament and Takeyuki Ueki and uh, Akita formed a makeshift tag team. They saw a loss, but that's really awesome that Francesco Akita got to get involved after all. And the last match of the first round, Atsuki Aoyagi and Rising Hayato got the win over Black Menzore and a returning Sushi when Hayato used a high angle cradle on Sushi at 9.09, getting dangerously close to that 10 minute rule. Now we get over to the semifinals. Hikaru Sato and Dan Tamura, they get the win over Infanterible's Okoto Omori and Yusuke Okada. Sorry. <laughs> Yusuke Kodama. Eh. At 5.09, when Sato used his capture style cross arm breaker on Kodama for the win, which was uh, really surprising to me, in all honesty. I, I, I mean. You know, yeah, Sato's tournament doesn't necessarily mean he's going to win it. He's, he's actually a fairly selfless booker. Um, but you expected yeah. Alphonse to win. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I, I really thought Alphonse Terrible were going to gonna pull it out there, but they did not. In the other semifinal, we had uh, Aimomoto and Fuminori Abe. They went to a draw, a 10-minute draw with Atsuki Aoyagi and Rising Hayato. As Matt mentioned, it went to a decision based on weight which Aoyagi and Hayato, I guess, won. <laughs> so it pays to be fat. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, we, our final was Hikaru Sato and Dan Tamura getting the win over Atsuki Aoyagi and Rising Hayato at 31.58 when Tamura got the pinfall on Hayato with the powerbomb. And so Tamura wins his second tournament of... 2020 his second tournament that's wow you know rookie winning two tournaments in one year is, is pretty big deal they get the win over aoyagi and hayato and congratulations to those two evolution riding high you know at the end of the at the end of 2020 they've got the world tag team slash double cup tag team championship they got the triple crown they've got the junior tag battle of glory that's Pretty, pretty dang good for a 2020 for them as a unit, I would say. So, yeah, that was uh, the Junior Tag Battle of Glory. And it'll be interesting to see if next year they keep this format or go back to the original format. Right. Anyway, uh, I have not seen the show. Uh, is that show on All Japan TV or is it a separate thing? <laughs> it is. Well, as we mentioned, it, it's uh, on Nico Pro and it is not available on AJPW.TV. There, some folks actually came to us on our Twitter and uh, at, uh, at Al AJPW Worldwide and we had to help clarify that I believe it's a Nico Pro exclusive, sort of like how the Prime show that that is exclusive to prime and so if you've got a way to watch uh amazon prime japanese amazon prime then you can go and rent uh, and i believe purchase the show to watch but uh outside of that i do not believe it is accessible right so new year's to tw new year's wars 2021 all righty let's get down to it night one Alrighty, uh, night one, January 2nd, Korokan Hall. Uh, Inzadagi and Shigehiro Idri from uh, Purple Haze defeat Asuki Aoagi and Hayato when uh, Irie did the Beast Bomber to Asuki. And then uh, we have a eight man tag Yoshitatsu, Ryuji Hijikata, Takayuki Yuki. And Chikara defeating Toko Omori, Black Men's Orei, Osamu Nishimura, and Ryuki Honda with the crab hold from Yoshitatsu against Honda. 
And then we have our next match, Koji Doi and Kumarashi. They've been Hikaru Sato and Dan Tamora. With Koji Doi hitting the lariat to Tamora. Uh, match four, we have Enfon Terrible, Shotaro Oshino, Hokuto Omori, and Yusuke Kodama defeating Jake Lee, Tajiri, and Francesco Akira when Shotaro did the ankle lock to Akira. And then we have the New Year Battle Royal, where the bodyguard, the bodyguard makes his return. The bodyguard! The bodyguard! <laughs> where he makes a return to win the Battle Royal in uh, 9 minutes, 49 seconds. And then a uh, special tag match. We have the astronauts, Ta Takuya Nomura and Fuminori Abe, defeating Koji Iwamoto and Ikuto Hidaka. When uh, Abe hit the Onryo clutch on Iwamoto to get the victory. And then the New Year special singles match. Masato Tanako from 0-1 defeats Zeus with the slide in D in 10 minutes, 48 seconds. And in our main event, the World Tag Team Championships. Kento Miyahara and Yuma Aoyagi uh, fighting the Rollaway Giants. And if the Giants lose, they must disband forever. And Yuma... Made Suwama pass out with the end game to win the titles. His first All Japan title, not All Asia, with Kento Miyahara getting momentum for the show the next day. And because of this, the Giants are no longer a team. Whew. <laughs> it's a lot to process. A lot to process. This was uh, this is also a really good show. I will, yeah. uh, especially the the tag match with uh, astronauts. Koji and Ikudo Hidaka. But that was one of my favorite uh, junior tag matches, and uh, it's good to see Ikudo sticking around. And because of this, Abe will get a junior heavyweight championship match later on in the month. So that's going to be a great match. And this tag match, the tag title match, was probably my favorite match of the two days. I thought this was a really good match with. Uh, Suwama being the shit out of Yuma, like, hey, um, I'm your guy, I'm your, <laughs> I'm your mentor, damn it. Uh-huh. So you're gonna, uh, if you want this ch championship, you gotta make sure you beat me. And he did. Message received from mm -hmm. Yuma. And Yuma has grown a lot in these past six months or so. Yes, I agree. Wholeheartedly. So, yeah, because before, I was not for him, like, I knew, like, he's definitely gonna fall behind, but after... Finally coming on his own. The Carnival. Tag with Kento again. Again, it's a big... It's a huge step. Like, now he's not far behind. Yeah. I agree. I agree 100%. Um, I've got some notes here. Uh, first off, to open up the show, we were informed that Yuki Honda and Tajiri are formally now with All Japan Pro Wrestling. They are signed wrestlers in the... The roster. Yuki Honda had passed his entrance exam to become a member of the dojo. And I suppose they had not signed him yet because he had been competing for the last like two to three months as a, I guess, a freelancer. They hadn't signed him, but he had um, passed the dojo initiation and he made it through and he's in the dojo. He's going to probably be working with the, the new guys that just picked up. We were just talking about them. Now, Tajiri is, of course, uh, running the dojo and is a big hand backstage. And so that just kind of made sense why they signed him to a deal, sort of similar to Shuji Ishikawa signing a, a deal last year and becoming formerly a member of All Japan. Uh, Ishikawa had been helping backstage with this and that and so it's just sort of a reflection of that relationship and right. so um, this goes back to the, the Joshi thing you know uh, Tajiri could be the the missing piece of the puzzle to get the, the Joshi matches over in all Japan because Tajiri you know he had uh, Smash he had Wrestling New Classic and both of them featured a prominent amount of women's wrestling and some mixed matches as well, so that could be really interesting. Bodyguard is not, as far as I'm, uh, as far as I know, was a surprise entrance, uh, entrant into the battle royal. He was not announced. He might have been, but it was still a nice surprise for me coming out, 
singing his theme and just being a, a badass like he always is. The murder grandpa, as a lot of folks like to call him. <laughs> uh, astronauts, the uh, reigning BJW World Tag Team Champions, they make their return to All Japan. And they had just gotten a huge win over the, the Twin Towers. We were just talking about them. Kyohei Sato and Suji Ishikawa. They, I mean, the astronauts giving up quite a size difference up to the Twin Towers, but the astronauts are just phenomenal wrestlers, and they are hot, hot, hot right now. Getting oh, yeah. that, getting the win over Twin Towers, I think, solidifies them as legitimate champions, not just some junior heavyweights that uh, you know we're, we we think of you know from the the their past. You know, uh, Abe is still a moderately you know, smaller guy, but to, Nomura is definitely putting on the size and it shows. And that match that he had with Suzuki uh, earlier, I think it was, uh, was it 2019 or maybe it was this past year? I think it was this past year. Yeah, uh, with Minota Suzuki really showed me he's ready to step up to become uh, a heavyweight. In fact, I think he even challenged for the, the strong, strong heavyweight division title in uh, Big Japan. And so I, I'm a huge fan of Takuya Nomura. I would love to see him more in All Japan. Hopefully in the Champions Carnival. You know, hopefully in the Champions Carnival. Uh, Tanaka facing his former tag partner and friend, uh, Zeus. Now, right. they have a relationship going back to the 2000s when Hustle was still alive. You know, 3, 2, 1, Hustle. That thing that a lot of people forgot about. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Naoya Ogawa, who seems to still have that Hustle in his heart. He's he's a weirdo. Uh, yeah. But also, uh, Hustle, Hustle in Zero One shared the same uh, parent company at the time, which was uh, DSE. Dream Stage Entertainment, and through this relationship, many of the Zero One wrestlers would work in Hustle and Otani, uh, Masato Tanaka. Masato Tanaka won their hardcore title. I forgot it was like H H H. I forget what the initials stood for, but it was like a big golden baseball bat with like a, a barbed wire, or it was like a weaponized baseball bat. And Tanaka was the first winner of that title. But uh, they they have a relationship from back then. Tanaka was Zeus's mentor for a time, and they are also former NWA Intercontinental Tag Team Champions. And so this was kind of a, a match that kind of throws that back to that relationship. And Zeus showed Tanaka respect after the loss, and it's just because you know Tanaka, you know, it, it has great respect for Tanaka, and who wouldn't? He's a very accomplished wrestler. It's still awesome to watch. Um, what's funny to me. Is that the uh, uh, that um, the the there was a Noah show that happened a couple days afterwards, and both Hidaka and Masada Tanaka sh both no, showed up. <laughs> they both showed up in the Noah show, and we don't really go into the the Noah uh, pool of information. I mean, you know, it, it's cool if you watch it. You know, that's awesome. But we're an all Japan show. There, there are obviously uh, links. There are obviously chains that bind one to another, but, you know, we mostly just focus on All Japan. But I just thought that was kind of interesting how both right. of them kind of showed up, you yeah, know, not too long after. People. They are very busy people, but I was just telling a friend, you know, those Zero One guys, they're not used to getting that. They're not used to getting, what's that word they're not familiar with? Paid. They're not used to getting paid. And so they, they're, they're, they're very happy to get that Noah money, you know, where they can. And uh, like finally, <laughs> yeah. And, and so finally, um, the last two things is uh, Yuma definitely showing that he is for real. He is not just somebody that just gets like flash victories. He's not somebody that just kind of, oh, he might have got lucky that time. No, he, he put out Suama. He put out the, the Triple Crown Champion in the title match. In the, the time that it mattered the most for, for his career, I would say, because he gets the big win. Kento does not get the win for the team. It's Yuma. So Yuma is the 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 he is the 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 straw that stirs the drink in this instance. Right. And so to me that was a big 
like you know yuma is here and he's ready to take you know he's ready to take it and could tomorrow be the the big day where he becomes a five crown king and at the very end of the tag title match uh, after the the uh, runaway giants uh left and you know they were forced to break up uh pre per the pre-match stipulation but team uh, BJW showed up, which is uh, Abdullah Jr., Abdullah Kobayashi, and Daisuke Sekimoto. They show up to challenge for the tag belts, uh, and this is due to the fact that they got a win over Next Stream over the yeah, tag the, champs. Yeah, and the the first, yeah, that were the first victory. <laughs> yeah, in the real world tag league, and so that is. Uh, that that is what's going on. That that is what's happened. That is night one. All right, now night two. The next day, January third, back at Corican Hall with six hundred and sixty-five fans. The bodyguard and and Francesco Akira defeated Ryuki Honda and Alejandro. When the bodyguard did the camel clutch to Alejandro. And then the next match, Shigehiro Irie and Utomori of uh, Purple Haze defeated Takuro Omori and Black Menzo Rei. When Irie hit the Beast Bomber on Menzo Rei again, because they really hate Black Menzo Rei. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Uh, we have Jake Lee, Koji Wamoto, and Tujiri defeating Shuji Shikawa, Karasato, and Dan Tamura when Lee hits the backdrop on Tamura. The next match, Alfon Terrible, Shotaro Shina, Kumarashi, and Yusuke Kodama defeated Kento Miyahara, Atsuke Aoyagi, and Ryzen Hayato when Ashino did the ankle lock to Hayato again. And then our first title match, the All Asia Tag Team Championships. Zeus and Izanagi retain against Hokuto Mori and Koji Doi after a Tiger suplex hold from Izanagi to Amori. In 12 minutes and 44 seconds. And then the biggest match ever, the Gora TV Championship. It's a tables, ladders, and chairs death match. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop, stop. You're telling me that this isn't a, a TLC match where we're going to see some uh, mentions about uh, chasing waterfalls and uh, no scrubs <laughs> and this red light not, specials? This is, not, it's not, this is not the United States, so no. Rats! <laughs> Rats, I say. Rats. Maybe, maybe in WWE, maybe there, but not here. <laughs> well, I feel so damn unpretty now. <laughs> anyway, the biggest death match ever. <laughs> Yoshi Tatsu defend the belt against Jun Kasai, and Jun Kasai is your new Kaora TV champion when he grabbed the belt, failing his tenth title defense. And now at the main event, I guess. The the semi-main event. Uh, Suwama <laughs> retains the Triple Crown Championship against Yuma with the backdrop hold in 26 minutes and 28 seconds. Yoshi, never do a death match again. No. That was... I'm sorry, that was horrendous. Well, I, I mean, okay, so, so I kind of felt like it was a, a fun match on Kasai's part because you know asking Kasai no, to give you a... Kasai, yeah but yeah. again with Yoshi he should not do this ever again <laughs> no but but remember I, I believe last episode we talked about it and you were asking me could you see Yoshi Tata doing a death match and I said yeah but just for the sake of saying well he could do a death match because you know oh yeah he, he thinks he's multi versatile um and he did it but did he do it well? No, but I, I, I did say that too. I was just saying, you know, he could do it for the sake of saying he did it. You know, I play DDR with a broken foot. Does that mean I did it well? No, but did I? can <laughs> I say I did it? I did. So, um, and DDR is Dance Dance Revolution. I, I didn't do anything with Ram. So, yeah, just to clarify. Uh, um, yeah. But you uh, win the All Japan belt. Um, has that happened before? I don't believe so. No, it's it's Kasai's first uh, title for All Japan. Yes. All right. Well, uh, I guess this is gonna, we're gonna be seeing him for a while. So I don't know. If this means we're gonna see death matches in All Japan, or he'll actually wrestle actual matches in between. Uh, so that's gonna be very interesting in itself, especially with June being the champion. Mm -hmm. uh, Suwama with Yuma. I think this was his best Triple Crown match for this reign. Yes. 
Yes. I'll, I'll go ahead and give my spiel when you're done. Go ahead. But, uh, again, I said Yuma did very well the the previous day, but this one himself without Kento, you can tell he's a star in the making. Like He really is. So any, any criticism I had of him, I take back. If he stays like this, I will gladly be open to him being Triple Crown Champion. Uh, but again, great show in. Suwaba really helped him out become his own man. And again, that's what happened. Yuma, Yuma became his own man officially from the past year. Because this is also the one year he turned heel on Kento. Like where he started making that change. And now it's like slowly coming to fruition that he is, he can be a star. And this is like the the nail in the coffin, the final nail in the coffin to make it that. Also, after this match, Shotaro Ishino challenged Suwama to a rematch for the Triple Crown Championship. So I think we're going to get that in February during the Excite Tour. I feel like this is when this match should have officially happened. Like, this should have been where they first encounter. But then again, there was a rumor of them going to Glee. I guess they want to get all out of the way before he went. Like, get the carnival, get the championship match. If that didn't happen, this definitely would have happened now. And this would have been the right time to do it now. After building himself up for the past six, seven months in all Japan. Actually, we need to take a quick break. And we will get back to our talk about what's been going on in all Japan. And we will be right back. This is Matt and Dave for Suwama Station. All Japan Worldwide Fan Group Podcast. We will be right back. couple of uh, uh, notes that I have um, is that first off um, this this show per, it, I, you know what I would say it's a more fun show than right. the la, than the the previous nights because the other the previous nights was just like action packed just jammed you know with just tons and tons of great wrestling and goodness and all kinds of surprises and you know uh you know all sorts of things that would be like well the the five more people showed up <laughs> there was a reason for that i suppose but um on this show you got more of uh what all japan has looked like for the past couple of months kind of reflection and so i was fine with most of this i, I would actually say like i said it was a, a fun show Right, everything no, is kept, yeah. Show. Uh, uh, definitely, everything kind of kept to being more on pace with how the rest of the the twenty twenty has gone. Um, you had Purple Haze surprisingly get the win over Omori and Doi uh, of Infant Terrible because I honestly thought they were going to they were going to win the All Asian Tag Belts, but uh, Zeus and Izanagi seemingly pulled out, and you know, good for Izanagi. As as far as I can remember, he's been the guy that's been making the wins. For yeah, his team, yeah. so like, he's been he's pulling his weight. Does, like he's not just a fall guy; he actually gets wins. He's actually yeah. not a bad wrestler. Yeah, he. Well, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Madiyama. He's a very nice man. I've talked with him once uh, through uh, Facebook, and uh, you right. know, his English is limited, but he was very flattered that you know people who well, we should get uh, him on the show again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he'd he'd be jumping at that, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I just uh, I was really happy to see uh, Izanagi again pulling his weight and getting the win over Omori. Um, I, I would definitely say this is just building more on top of Omori though as a uh, a wonder for a a rookie for being a young wrestler, just because he he is really good. He is developed very fast, and he is it, it's uh, it's obvious he's a product of Atsushi Aoki's training. He's just so smooth and he's got that heel demeanor down very, very well. I would do all I can to keep uh, Infant Terrible around and have Omori just stay with that group because it's 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 done a lot more for him than I would say it did for Seki Yoshioka. 
who was the guy in Wrestle 1, sort of in a Morty spot. Uh, Yoshioka had a couple more years on him, and he had a bit more of an air of being the, the junior ace uh, for Wrestle 1 because he was he was, he was was in Wrestlegate, uh, I want to say as Hanzo, but I don't think that's right. I think he just was in Wrestlegate, and right. Hanzo runs Wrestlegate, maybe is what I'm getting to. is. Um, but anyways, uh, Yoshioka had signed, uh, he was going to go to All Japan and go in their dojo. And that was right at the time where Wrestle 1 said, the, the group of uh, wrestlers from All Japan said, we're going to go and form Wrestle 1. And so he went along with him. And he kind of he kind of stagnated after a while. And then he joined up with Strong Hearts. And that sort of helped him along. But not, not a great deal. But... Omori with Infants Rivale is a much more natural fit than I think Yoshioka was. And Yoshioka actually worked the Junior Battle of Glory tournament last year. Goodness. And I might have been... I don't think it was this year. But I think it was last year as it won. As he competed in, right? And, and, and he did a, a great job in it. But I don't think that really mattered that he was a member of Strong Hearts at the time. I, I just don't. Um, so, anyways, um, Black Menzore came out to challenge for the, the, the TV champion chip that Kasai just won, along with his buddy Takala Mori. And, um, you know, he goes up to Kasai and he says, Sha! And Kasai is just like, what the hell is this? Like, like what what are you about, right? And he just, Kasai is more... I got it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a Sha death match. For yeah. These two. Yeah, it, it just it, it it confused Kasai more than anything, I and mean, I loved it. It was it was hilarious. Uh, um, Udamaro and EDA they come out and they say that they want a shot at the All Asian Tag Belts, which is very uh, unique because you know you have a pair of champions that, that that are challenged by their stablemates. You know you don't see that too often these days, but you know I'm sure this isn't going to lead to a breakup or anything like that. It's just hey. They're a little hungry for belts, and obviously EDA and Udamaro, they're not in the contendership for the World Tag Team slash Double Cup Tag Team Championship, so they're they're focusing their aim on something a little more realistic. Um, Ashino was actually... I'm sorry? Is that like, I'm down for Irie and Zeus sharing the ring against each other. <laughs> yes. Um, back to Kasai, though. He does very good wrestling matches as well as deathmatch stuff so no, I, I, think, I, I think i think kasai working regular matches is going to be a good thing for him uh he was a lot of fun to watch in wrestle one and the new wild order <laughs> being right. tag partners with uh, soya and akita and so I, I i'm very glad that kasai is going to be working with all japan more I just do hope that they don't really do much of the deathmatch stuff. You know, All Japan has had a history of violence in its wrestling, which is okay by me. You know, you want to open up somebody occasionally, you know, get a little blood. I mean, obviously, right now, we you probably don't want to do that to, to, <laughs> for the most part, right, to avoid, you know, uh, uh, precaution, to, to, you know, avoid, you know, certain things uh, COVID-related. But at the same time, if you just limit it to that instead of just saying, okay, we're going to have a, a Kenzan death match. We're going to have a Piranha death match. We're going to have an alligator, light bulbs, all this kind of stuff. You know, if they just say, okay, well, occasionally he's going to, you know, open him up or he's going to, you know, uh, that's one of his spots is he's going to look for like a road spike or a, a ring spike and, you know, jack you up. Then it's something like a throwback to like Abdul the Butcher and Tiger Jeet Singh and those guys did have a career in all japan at times and so uh well tiger jeet see more than new japan but he still definitely you know showed up into all japan at times but uh you know abdul the butcher original chic definitely uh original all japan uh or is in uh, you know he was a, original chic is uh, went back to to you know old school all japan and um uh, so i'm i'm fine with a little bit of violence in the in, in, in Kasai's act, as long as it's not, I'm going to have a full blown death match on an All Japan show. Because a lot of folks, I don't think would would come just to see that. I think they would. They were definitely sour on that. Yeah, they were definitely sour on that. So if they can find a, a way to toe the line, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Now, um, I did want to mention Ashino was nominated by Suwama 
to oh, challenge okay. for the Triple Crown heavyweight title. Yeah, Suwama had the mic, he had the title, and he had just stabbed off a um, a probably the most intense challenge for his Triple Crown that he's had for a while, right? In in, in Yuma, right? And I, I got to definitely say Yuma brought it. Yuma gave him all he had. I actually watched this main event with a, a good buddy of mine who is not much into Japanese wrestling, but he was sucked in entirely by the Suwama Yuma match, and he was just impressed with how hard these guys are hitting each other. Uh, Suwama with the double chops and the lariats, Yuma with all the kicks. I mean, there was one kick where Yuma just catches Suwama like right in the jaw, and it's like, damn, you know, we, we, we I had heard about, um, uh, Finn Balor, that's what I was going to say. I, I, I keep wanting to call him Devitt, right? But Balor, <laughs> Balor and Kyle O'Reilly, they had a, a, a as all JR would say, a slobber knocker. They had a slobber knocker over uh, on NXT, and they both got injured from that, right? And that's what I was kind of expecting from this match was Yuma has like a busted rib, but he'll be okay in a few weeks. And Suwama, you know, had to get his jaw wired, you know, shut, but uh, that didn't happen. But they were like, beating the shit out of each other it was a beautiful oh, yeah. match beautiful match and, and you really at times felt like yuma was gonna get suama like he was gonna go two for two this weekend i really thought that at times i was stunned when suama was able to pull it out and just went all jumbo suduta and just started dunking him on his head just over and over with the backdrops until finally he got that fourth or fifth one and that, that was you know it for yuma but Yuma definitely proving, you know, he's not only the bell of the ball, he's not, as you've mentioned, you know, got to be the most improved wrestler in the last six months in all Japan. But he's shown that he's got what it takes to sell out a Kurokin Hall show and to be seen as a credible, credible Triple Crown heavyweight contender. His days, uh, you, you talk about a nail in the coffin. I would say this match put the nail in the coffin on the belief that he was just a a mid carter, you know. And so, right. having said that, you know the 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 future looks bright for all Japan's main event scene, especially when you look at the fact that Suama is pretty much, you know, it, it's it's the the sundown on his main event status, you know, it, it's the, the, the last, you know, he's like the Clint Eastwood in Unforgiven, you know, he's pretty much on his last ride, his last, <laughs> his last no, ride, I, I, there you go. <laughs> I get hit, what you did there, I see it. And, uh, you know, and, and I'm fine with that, and a lot of folks like to talk smack on Suwama, and they like to say he's this, he's that, he's an oil, he's a broke down Jumbo Suduta, like the early 90s. And I got to say, even that Jumbo was the scary cat, okay? But Suwama, in this match, showed he can still hang with young guys. He can still yeah. mix it up with anybody. Young, old, junior heavyweights, uh, lighter heavyweights, bigger heavyweights. He can, he can mix it up with all of them. And so uh, I, much like Robert on Twitter... Uh, who uh, was the first one to go and report on uh, Shuji Shikawa working on the 15th for Just Tap Out. Um, Suwama slowing down, like his work rate, that's just, it's absurd. It's absurd because Suwama just right. proved he, he is the big boss here in this match. And so my hat goes off to Suwama. You know, he, he killed it in this match. Uh, he killed Yuma, <laughs> and uh, Yuma. But D Yuma definitely shown that he he's ready for the he's ready for the big top. He's ready for the big top. Uh, one final thing of note is that a lot of people, myself included, were um, a little flustered at a uh, 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 uh counting, which was uh, pretty pretty slow and deliberate. Um, right. At that, but uh, uh, as a lot of people have pointed out, though. Um, he is the direct descendant as far as the role of head referee or just you know, a, a very instrumental part of All Japan of Joe Higuchi. Old school Joe Higuchi, who we talked about with uh, Fumi Saito, who was the original guy for um, 
Baba, he was a big part of the backstage, and he made some of those big matches for the the seventies and the eighties um, when Joe Higuchi was a, a younger guy. But as it gets to the the late eighties and the nineties, Kyohei Wada starts becoming that guy, the the referee that makes the match because Fumi Saito talked about the Kyohei Wada being as instrumental in those uh, classic matches from the, the 90s of Misawa, Kobashi, Akayama, Kawada. He was their referee, and so he made those matches too. And Kyohei Wada is sort of just, can you know, he, he's continuing that lineage of the Joe Higuchi style of, uh, of counting, at least now. Um, I know a lot of folks didn't appreciate it, I know at the time I was a little frustrated and I could see on Twitter a lot of folks' responses where they were showing the same sentiment. And maybe it is time to have, you know, Lee, Nikan Lee, who already does a fair amount of, of backstage work. She's, be, she's been invaluable to All Japan uh, in the year that she's been officially signed with All Japan, but she's been working with them for a while now. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that develops. And, and it's and it, this, we're talking about referees. We're talking about just, you know... Uh, uh, personnel in the back um one final note is that uh there is a, a long time all japan referee who retired um my the name escapes me i'll have to go back and ask some of our uh japanese friends who pointed it out um but yeah the the I believe the january 3rd show was his last show and he yeah. retired and so we want to wish him well and hope that he you know uh has a, a great life outside of working in his capacity or as a referee and uh yeah i think that pretty much catches us up to date on the results for 2021 yep. january and, uh, we have some uh match announcements for the rest of the new year's war tour we got about four matches so i'm gonna say them right now for the chiba extra dream on uh january 10th we got Ryuki Honda's trial match series starting with against Shuji Ishikawa. Then we have Asuki Ayoagi against Ryze and Hayato. And then we have a Junior Heavyweight Prelude, apparently Street Fight, with Jake Lee and Koji Wamato against Ayoto Yoshida and Fuminori Abe. And then for January 24th at Korokan Hall, we have Koji Iwamoto in the junior heavyweight championship against Fuminori Abe. Those are some really, really interesting matches. To yes, yeah, uh, I didn't expect the street fight, so I'll try to figure that's an actual street fight or is it just for the title of the match. <laughs> I think it's just the title of the match, you know, uh, because all those guys they don't necessarily work a. Um... <laughs> They don't work uh, that kind of style. And and those are all the members of Jin, too. Oh, no, sorry. We're missing Nomura. We're missing the, the, the big piece. The big piece. We're yeah, all dying. I need him back. <laughs> yes, we, we need him back. Um, so a couple of uh, things here. Um, so Ishikawa working with Honda. And by the way, congratulations that Honda has his, uh, his trial series so fast already. But, you know, Honda had been a graduate of the Wrestle 1 dojo and so he had already had a bit of seasoning before he got over to all japan's dojo uh so it's not um unrealistic to just like okay he he just signed just debuted now let's give him a seven match trial series he he he's had some experience under his belt but ishikawa is going to be a huge test to honda honda did fairly well over the weekend right he was in a, a tag match and i believe he got the win and as well as, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, he got the win. And then he was in the Battle Royal where he was one of the last guys in that Battle Royal and got eliminated by the Bodyguard and Francesco. Right. And so, um, actually, he he didn't win uh, any of his matches over the weekend. So I just got to remember to, to put that out. Anyways. The fact of the matter is, is that Honda looked impressive um, in just the, the, the matches that he was in over the weekend. Now, he's still green. He still has a ways to go. But as far as just raw potential, he's got it. You know, he's got a lot of raw potential. Oh, yeah. So, I can't see his, uh, how his uh, trial opponents are going to be after this. So. Yes. Uh, I, I'm with you there. And uh, I, I think working with Ishikawa 
is the the right step to go if they do not reunite the, the twin towers i think I ishikawa should be working primarily with honda and then you know maybe suama starts mentoring Don Tamura, you know, but Tamura already has his tag team with uh, Hikaru Sato. We'll see how that right. all turns out. But at the end of the day, uh, all of these are really, really uh, exciting matches that uh, you should be looking forward to. Atsuki working with Rising Hayato, that's going to be a, a good rivalry to sort of build them both up because they're both young guys. They're hungry, super talented, super fast, super exciting wrestlers. And uh, they both got new gear over the weekend. I actually posted it up on our Twitter. was like, right. I, I dig, you know, everybody's talking about the new gear all the New Japan guys have. But what about the new gear that, you know, Aoyagi and Hayato our, our, and Francesco Kiyoko? Our, our, our favorite rookies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Asuki, Aoyagi, and Rising Hayato and Francesco Akira all getting new gear. I was really, I was really happy to see that. And then you, you mentioned the, the tag match. The street fight with all the members of Jin, you know. Hopefully, Nomura shows up, and you know, like you know, he maybe he goes to a no contest, and they have a a Heart Foundation '97 moment where he just comes in and is like, "Let's not fight, guys! Come on, we're all <laughs> bros!" And then everybody gives a hug, and they get a boo, and then Jin turns into a heel stable. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Uh, so, but, do you, so do you think your tower is going to be Suwama this time? <laughs> um, I want to say yes. If he doesn't, I, I wouldn't I, be I shocked. Hope so not because I like Ashino and he, I think he's earned a, a right to um, do a run as a top guy somewhere else. But yeah. also, I feel like Suwama is like okay, like it's safe for me to step away. You got the people. You got Jake, Kento, Shotaro, Yuma, Nomura. Like you got these guys and Zeus. Mm -hmm. Like it's okay with me not there. Like these guys can lead now. Right. Right, I, I think so too, but as I mentioned, it is Suwama's last. <laughs> it's his last ride, so it might just be that he gets you know one more go around and then he coughs it up after the Champions Carnival. You know, he kind of is you know he he goes into the Champions Carnival. Maybe he loses all of his matches in the Champions Carnival. He's kind of on a decline, and then whoever wins the carnival takes it off him, and you know Suwama maybe takes some time off before showing back up and working, you know, maybe challenging for the world tag belts, maybe not necessarily winning them again, but, you know, staying a contender, but not being somebody that you see primarily in the the main event or the semifinal. Um, right. I, I do want to talk about the Iwamoto Abe match. Now, that's going to be one hell of a fight. Uh, Iwamoto and Abe, they're really good friends. They know each other. They work well as a team. They work even better as rivals. It's awesome that they're a part of Jin. Don't get me wrong. I really like the fact that, you know, they're, they're a part of a great team uh, like Jin. But at the same yeah. time, they, they work even better as rivals. I'll say it to the, to the heavens. I'll say it as many times as it needs to be said. But they work really well against each other and that tag match just showed a little a little it gave you a little rock for your pookie you know you want more you want you want a big rock and you want to you know you want that crack and um that crack being Iwamoto and Abe and a one-on-one -on -one match where the stakes are high for the junior heavyweight title and it's that's going to be a hell of a match that's going to be one hell of a match I gotta say while initially we had hoped to get this episode out a lot sooner, we kind of hit a snag in our timing wise. And so we were not going to cover the full results of the month, but because we have time now to include them into the episode, we're going to go ahead and do that. So the next event that they had was on 1-10, January 10th at Chiba 2A Square. Let's go over that real fast. Diyuki Honda got his very first match in his seven match trial series honda is the first all japan heavyweight prospect in a long time so it's actually a very exciting development shuji ishikawa is the man to kick that off and if he knows something about great heavyweight wrestlers and shuji ishikawa is your man for this job to start this thing off Ishikawa gets the win over Duki Honda at all of nearly eight minutes with the running knee lift. Takao Mori, Tajiri, and Black Menzode get the win over Yoshitatsu Kingdoms. Yoshitatsu, Takayuki Ueki, and Shikata 
when Black Menzo Day used Snake Boy on Shikata. Yuma Aoyagi gets the win over Aizanagi and a little over nine and a half minutes with the end game submission. Kento gets a win over his good friend Francesco Akito with the shutdown. Set down German suplex. You want to go out of your way to check that one out. In the battle of the Jin stable with the four active members going up against uh, each other, Jake Lee, Koji Iwamoto, former All-Asian Tag Team Champions, get the win over the visiting Ayato Yoshida from 2AW and Fuminori Abe from Pro Wrestling Basada when Iwamoto used the Japanese leg roll clutch on Abe for the win. Atsuki, Aoyagi, and Rising Hayato went to a double KO at about 22-25. Now, these two are uh, they are also in a stable themselves. They are stable mates in the new version of Nick Stream. But this is a fantastic match. you got to go out of your way to watch this one. Hayato just shines here. Aoyagi, he's... He is somebody that you want to be keeping your eye on for the future, most definitely. In the main event, we had Shotaro Shino, Kumarashi, and Hokuto Omori from Infanterie get the big win over Suwama, Hikaru Sato, and Tantamura, the, the, the main, remaining members of uh, Evolution Stable right now, when Ashino used the ankle lock on young boy Tamura for the win. We move on to the last show of the tour, which was on the 24th at Kurikin Hall. Uh, pretty pretty good sized crowd. I'm, let's say it's a sellout for the limited capacity that Kirken Hall is allowed to have right now. In the opener, Purple Haze gets the win over Jake Lee, Tajiri, and Francesco Akita when Zeus used a hell of a choke slam on Akita in a little under six and a half minutes to get the win on that one. I got the chance to call play by play, and there wasn't too long ago, so the, my memories of the, the matches are uh, pr- pretty fresh. Uh, Purple Haze basically just using their their really good tactics of just knowing each other and being cohesive as a unit, whereas Jake Lee, Tajiri, and Francesco Akita are sort of a uh, a mixed bag, if you will. They're not all together as a unit. Hikaru Sato, Dan Tamura, and the visiting Rabo, Rambo Kawamura get the win over Takawamori, Kaburito, and Alejandro when Sato used his capture style cross arm breaker on Omori surprisingly for the win at eight minutes now in the match when I was calling play by play I happened to mention that Omori kind of seemed a bit out of element on this one maybe he's, he was having a, a down day with maybe he was a little sick but you could tell that Carbo Ito and Alejandro were firing on all pistons Omori looked a little sluggish out there wound up costing his team the match but nonetheless still a fun event fun match Shuji Ishikawa in his former Good friend, well, the good friend, but former tag team teammate in the Twin Towers tag team. They had some really awesome matches in BJW. Their team with Ryuki Honda, the new rookie heavyweight prospect in the dojo. They get the win over Yoshitatsu Kingdom slash Lands in Alliance. Yoshitatsu, Yoji Sai, and Shikata when Sato used a drill a hole pile driver on Shikata in about seven and a half minutes. Infanterible in eight man action get a huge win over next stream when Omori used the Muso Asen on Aoyagi. Looked like a modified version of the Oration Flame or the staggering blow from Wataru Inoue, who was an awesome technical wrestler from New Japan from a couple of years back. But Infanterible get the big win here over next stream Gara TV title match we saw Jun Kasai bring his deathmatch style of wrestling into all Japan and get a win over Black Menzode using the reverse Tiger Driver now the thing you gotta remember about this match is that Black Menzode not very well known for his hardcore style of wrestling, but he did seem to kind of take to this match fairly well. He did seem to be able to hang in there with Kasai. It was a lot more exciting and fun than I imagine it would have been. But uh, there were some really, really like uh, intense spots where Kasai and Black Menzo Day are just dropping each other, uh, you know, on various body parts. It's it's pretty stiff in all you know in all fairness of things. But I would definitely check this one out if you're a fan of Kasai or if you're a fan of Black Menzo Day. Moving on to the semifinal, we had Koji Iwamoto get a win 
over his stablemate in Jin, Fuminori Abe, his really good friend from back in the day in Sportiva with the Koko no Gejetsu. You just hit that thing lightning fast, like our good friend Kompa would say, in about 13 and a half minutes. It was a wonderful match. It could have gone on a little bit longer. Hopefully, this isn't the last time these two meet for the title, as I feel Abe would be a really good champion maybe sometime down the road in 2021 in the main event suwama gets the big win over shotaro ashino defending the triple crown heavyweight title with that backdrop hold of his and uh, the spirit of jumbo suruta with that fifth defense now i got really 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 excited about hearing this match was going to go on i didn't think it was going to be going on so soon but i thought it was a fantastic match it was very well done it could have been a little better. I'd say it's pretty on par with their match from last year, but I would check this out if you're a fan of thick boy, heavyweight wrestlers just dropping each other on their heads. Uh, fantastic submission and limb work from both of these wrestlers kind of going for that ankle lock. Who is going to get it on first? And it was a, a very good match. Ashino showing a lot of respect to Suwama. Suwama showing respect to Ashino. Something could be developing there. Possibly a, a team down the road. Uh, it would be very interesting to see what happens next. Now, for those folks that are not in the know, there was a giant Baba Memorial show that also happened just a few days ago from us recording this, the updated segment of the show uh, with the results, all the results for January. So let's go over that real fast. Again, we want to send a big shout out to Pudo Love and all those folks for helping us with all these results and all the information behind it. They're wonderful people. Please go and check them out at PudoLove.com. So, Fuminori Abe, sorry, Fumihito Karihara, Tiger, <laughs> Tiger Kihara. And Kyohei Wada produced his show along with a couple of other sponsors to have the 23rd annual, 23rd anniversary, excuse me, memorial show for G Plus, which is a network that used to air, I'm sorry, which used to air Noah and All Japan and various wrestling promotions. But the opener had Jensei Shinzaki, Mitsuya Nagai, and Tomoaki Hanma, all wrestlers that were competing in the All Japan. Muto era, Shinzaki kind of got there a bit before Muto would get into play. They defeated Ozama Nishimura, Andy Wu, and Alejandro when Shinzaki used the praying powerbomb on Alejandro at 625. We had a special memorial match between six wrestlers, I'm sorry, eight wrestlers that have some real connection to Giant Baba. Masanobu Fuchi, of course, is the oldest active wrestler from that era who was still in the all japan he teamed up with his friend atsushi onita they formerly are all asian tag team champions they also were good friends it spent time on the road over in the u.s during the early 80s Craig kojika who is the one of the founding members of bjw he is also somebody that spent time wrestling in all japan and spent time around giant baba Working with Shido Koshidaka, who trained in the All Japan Dojo during the Baba days and was sent off to Mexico, where eventually he would come back to join New Japan in sort of a, a twist of uh, a fate, if you will. They go and get the win over Takao Mori, who is another wrestler who came up during the giant Baba era of All Japan. They teamed up with Arashi and Tsuyoshi Kikuchi, uh, Tsuyoshi Kukuchi, of course, spending time training and competed in All Japan during the 90s. Arashi actually got a chance to team with Giant Baba in a NWA title tournament once upon a time in the late 80s. They teamed up with what a lot of folks are saying, who, uh, who a lot of folks are saying was Kotaro Suzuki under a Tiger Mask 2 outfit. Now, for those of you that are not familiar, Tiger Mask was purchased by... The gimmick was purchased by All Japan when Satoru Sayama wound up leaving New Japan and joining up with UWF, the original UWF group. And so New Japan felt a way to salvage it was to sell it to All Japan, who put the gimmick on Mitsuhara Misawa. And so that is... Uh, well, that's where... 
that's why Tiger Mask 2 is in this uh, event on this match on this you know show. Moving on, they also aired a a classic Giant Baba versus Stan Hansen match from 1982, and so that was very you know the fantastic match. Baba still got some gas left in the tank. Hansen, of course, is you know a machine. He's a demon. What can I say about Hansen that hasn't already been said? Moving on. Bushi, who trained in the All Japan Dojo and was a part of All Japan for a couple of years during the Muto era before he got traded over to New Japan, he took on a rising star, a rising junior star in Atsuki Aoyagi. He gets the win. Bushi gets the win at 10:14 with the MX. It's uh, really nice to see Bushi mix it up with some of the newer All Japan talent. Yuji Nagata, somebody who is no stranger to All Japan, having won Champions Carnival, having won World Tag slash Double Cup Tag Team Championship, as well as the All Asian Tag Team Championship. He teamed up with Yuma Aoyagi, the two of them having spent time together in the New Japan uh, project that was a couple of years back where New Japan was still working with outside promotions and promoting various younger wrestlers such as Ayata Yoshida. They get the win over Minoru Suzuki and his disciple Hikaru Sato when Nagata used the backdrop hold on Sato at 12.23. Keiji Muto, somebody who was basically seen as the savior of all Japan after uh, Baba had passed away. He teams up with his former pupil Suwama, the current Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion. They teamed up with Satoshi Kojima, somebody who was also a pupil of Keiji Muto uh, back in the late 90s, uh, just the 90s in general. They get the win over Hiroshi Tenzan, who was a t- former tag, well, still tag partner of Kojima. They formed Ten Koji, the one of the most famous tag teams in all of Japanese pro wrestling. Tenzan teams up with Kaz Hayashi and Mazuyuki Kono. Kaz Hayashi, of course, was a big get for Muto to help kickstart his junior heavyweight division and make it something into something really fantastic. Hayashi had been sent over to HWA, which was a farm league. His contract was picked up by the WWF, WWE, at the time of WCW closing, but Hayashi didn't feel he was a very good fit and wanted to go home, so that's exactly what he did. Mazuyuki Kono, of course, is a... All Japan trainee from the later part of the Muto era. Uh, actually, he kind of started in the, the mid part of the Muto era, but he would not return until a bit later after he tried an MMA excursion. Uh, but, uh, Kono takes the fall here when Muto uses the Shining Wizard at 13.51 to get the win for his team. And that was the Giant Baba 23rd anniversary memorial show to pay homage to the great giant Baba. And this is but <laughs> this is the end of the part of the show that we are adding into that is new for the episode. We will resume back over to the rest of the episode as it was intended for right about now. Enjoy. All right, so that will conclude our results and future card. I believe so, right? Mm-hmm. All right, uh, before we do part three of our interview with Tai Okea, I believe that since it's the beginning of the year, uh, we should do the awards for 2020, don't you think? I agree. All right, these are the All Japan Awards of 2020. These are the people that we agreed on as the best in certain backgrounds. Uh, I'll let you take it away here. Well, actually, I, I, I was going to um, I was gonna list mine, and then I would love to hear yours because I our, think our, our lists are totally first, yeah I I our lists are probably a bit different. But um, Matt and I were talking as we were formatting the episode, and two of the things that he brought up that I definitely think should be included and that we should talk about, and, and one of them we actually just brought up uh, not more than ten minutes ago was the fact that um, Yuma is the most improved wrestler of 2020 for all japan because he, right. he he went into the champions carnival as sort of an enigma we, you know he we had we we didn't really know where things were heading with him because at the start of 2020 he had a chip on his shoulder he wanted to 
break away from Kinto. He wanted to get away from the things he had known, what people had known him for, was sort of being Kinto's little buddy, his uh, his shadow, his sidekick. You know, uh, the uh, the Paul Schaefer to his to Kinto's uh, David Letterman, if you will, and uh, <clears throat> Kinto. You know, could, didn't really have control of that. I'm sure if he could, he, he would have done something to minimize that because it, it's been very obvious that Kento uh, has some genuine care, like a, a little, like a big brother to a little brother for Yuma. And, but at the same time, Kento is like larger than life. So it's really hard to sort of minimize your image at, when, you know, you're the one of the top guys, if not the, the top guy of the promotion. And so Yuma, you know, he, he changed his look and he got that spin kick from uh, Kuki Kitahara, who runs Capture International, and spent some time working with him. And he goes into the Champions Carnival and he's almost like a new man. You know, you, you, you'd look at Yuma from the year before and you would see this new Yuma and you'd be like, they are literally night and day. You know, uh, Yuma tries to go out of his way to not be so... Uh, happy-go-lucky and wrestling sort of a junior style, Yuma sort of grounding himself and just becoming much more of a natural heel, sort of a, a prickish heel as time went on during the carnival. To me, he was the reason to watch the carnival. He was the standout. He was the guy that you were watching these matches and being like, boy, he's really grown. He, he's really changed. And so for me, I would say the most improved wrestler of 2020 for All Japan goes to Yuma Aoyagi. Absolutely. And so um, I have, uh, well, as uh, I was mentioning, Matt brought up two things that we should uh, we should have on the awards, which is the best, what was it, the, the best match as well and as, agent. and best free agent, yes. So uh, for me, I would say the best match, and, and this is where me and Matt do agree. Uh, actually, <laughs> I'll cut that out. I'll just say mine, and then he'll let I'll let his go with yep. that. Uh, was um, Zeus versus uh, Kento. Now for me, this match was bigger than a lot of other matches that I can think of for some time, uh, including Suwama stopping Kento, which itself was a great match, but was much more of Suwama just kicking the shit out of Kento, whereas Kento and Zeus, it's just a straight-up even fight. And it was fantastic. It is what the definition of pro wrestling should be. And it was just, it was phenomenal. Freelancer of uh, 2020, I would give it to Shotaro Ashino. Now, I, I would say that Jito uh, would be somebody to be in the running for it, personally but shotaro to me just was much more dominant he looked more dominant he looked tougher he looked stronger he he definitely did not come up on those title matches and and uh you know the carnival he definitely was not at the top of his game win loss record but as far as performance as part as far as a um of, of his presence everything that he did all to me just says that 2021 is going to be a huge year for him. And that's what a wrestler is supposed to do. It's supposed to build up his stock and make you believe that the success that he is clamoring for, that he maybe rightly deserves, is just around the corner. And for me, um, Shotaro Ashino was that guy. So I have, uh, for my top heavyweight, is Suwama. Suwama was a world tag team slash double cup tag team champion. He goes and he gets the triple crown off of Kento. And a lot of people were just like, you know, taken back. Like, oh my God, how did this happen? Or, you know, this was a wrong choice. This was the right choice. Kento does not need to blast through every single record, win every single tournament, Win every single prize that there is possible, like Kazuchika Okada in in New Japan, because that's what Okada did. Was he? They 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 pushed him to the moon. He won what two G ones in a row, if I'm not mistaken, right? I believe so. Yeah, he won two G ones in a row. He was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, one of them he was the sitting champion, 
as IWGP heavyweight champion. And so you, you pushed him too hard. And Okada is a fun, exciting wrestler, but it kind of just feels like he's done it all in New Japan. It really does. It, it, you know, I, I don't think he's won the tag titles yet, right? But that's that's kind of just illustrating my point is, is you don't want to throw everything at him to say, well, in X amount of time, he's done it all. Because then it's like, well, what is there left for him? And it's the same thing with Kento. It is Kento has practically won it all. He's won a Champions Carnival, Real World Tag League, Double Cup slash World Tag Team Championship. He's won the Triple Crown numerous times. To beat Kawada's record right then and there was a horrible idea. And Suwama squashed that thing. And on top of that, as Fumi pointed out in our, our conversation with him, was that Kento and Suwama come from two completely different schools of thought. Kento trained in the Kintsuki office and also in the Noah dojo. Suwama actually trained in the All Japan dojo, right? And so for Suwama, it, it was a mission. He had to stop somebody from destroying the legacy of another All Japan Trueborn, and that was Kawada and his record. And so Suama looked strong throughout the entire year, right? He did uh, have a bit of struggle during the Champions Carnival with his arm, but he managed to get through that and still uh, look good in the, the process, in the, the tournament. Real World Tag League still looked very very strong right and he continues to still look strong he he is the strongest heavyweight in japan in my view now we could go and contest is uh you know is he going to stay the dominant of 2021 i do not know but for 2020 i would say he was the man junior heavyweight you got to give this to koji iwamoto now the beginning of the year he had some struggles he managed to let it slip away from him in the tournament for the junior heavyweight title that was won by suzumu yokozuka but he had arguably one of the best matches of the year in all japan against suzumu to get the title back for all japan and iwamoto managed to compete in uh, a couple of different tournaments and he nearly won the real world tag league at, uh, along with jake lee and mm -hmm. that's a pretty big accomplishment for a, a junior heavyweight wrestler to get in there and win a heavyweight tournament. So, you know, good on him. Tag team of the year, I'm going to give it to Violence Giants because they were so dominant. They held on to the tag belts for a large part of the year. And they looked strong. A very little time did they look like they were not credible or threatening or just tough guys. You know, Violence Giants was the gold standard of tag team wrestling you had other teams like astronauts like access that gave them a run for their money and then tokyo sports didn't want to give it to them they wanted to give it to a makeshift team like sakurava and sugiuda and i won't go into you know i won't go into that but let's just say the real mvp tag team of the year of of uh, uh dave sports not tokyo sports but dave sports violence giants MVP of the year, I again throw that to Suwama. Suwama was the five crown king for a large part of the year. Definitely looked dominant in his wins. Definitely looked like he was somebody who is not to mess with. And he represents all Japan proudly. He does a great job doing that. And it was the five crown king right up until he lost the tag belts to Yuma and Kento. He's still the triple crown heavyweight champion. He's still the top dog. And he has not stopped looking like the top dog um, for, you know, some time. And finally, my choice for the rookie of the year is Don Tamuda. Uh, Don started out with a big win, the Asunado Cup uh, of, uh, that they just re revived this year. And Tamura was picked to become the disciple of Evolution, the young boy of Evolution, taking the place of Okada, who had left Evolution. And Tamura won that tournament in a fantastic final match. And Dan doing a great job in that role as the young boy of Evolution. And then Tamura 
getting the win in the Junior Tag Battle of Glory tournament, that just submitted him even further, in my view, as the Rookie of the Year. What would you have, Matt? All right, for Match of the Year, it's the same thing. Kento and Zeus, champion final. Because that was pro wrestling for me. This was an actual wrestling match and the best match they've had all of the whole year. Again, one of the best in general. Uh, you can't go wrong with them. They do great together, and this was like one of their best matches, like the one two years ago for the Triple Crown Championship in October. Give me uh, free agents. I gotta give it to Jiro. I thought he's. I I love Jiro. He's a heck of a fun guy. Uh, it's always a good laugh with him, especially with his entrance, uh, how he slaps people with his jacket, <laughs> and he's able to compete in the carnival final like he always wanted before he left. And he got a win over the Triple Crown champion, which is a big fee for him. So, uh, so it was nice to get that those victories on his way out. And I wish him luck in WWE. So, um, yeah, uh, again, very fun guy. I could have gave it to Shino, but again, I have a sauce about Fujiro. So, of course, he has to get it from me. Uh, heavyweight. I do have to give it to Suwama as well. Uh, he had some he had some really great matches as a single and tag team. Uh, he was able to carry both belts for the majority of the year. And yeah, like again, this beating Kento's record that helped him out. And Suwama having again defending both belts, beating in both tournaments, even though he lost them both, he still came out strong as that champion. Uh, junior heavyweight. I want to say Koji, but I am going to give it to Susumu. I know he's not really old Japan, but he did have that belt for half that year. And he's had great matches with Hikaru Sato. And no one expected him to win that belt ever or just have a short ring, but he proved otherwise. Right. And very great, very great talented guy. I love his matches. Again, especially with Hikaru. That was on one of my top 25 of the year. And uh, he's definitely earned that. And it showed, like, yeah, he is a very talented individual. So I love Koji, but at the same time, I had to give it to Susumu. Uh, tag team, Violence Giants, of course. Like, again, they they were the tag team champions for the whole year. They had they were a year as champions. Yeah. As this, yeah, so uh, they had a great ring, uh, defend the belt successfully five times. Uh, each match was different. Each match told different stories that were great to their advantage. And it's like the great final chapter of the Giants. Like, like I am going to miss them as a tag team. Yeah, I am too. Uh, MVP, uh, I am giving this to Kento. Uh, in terms of star power and is still performing, even not in the top spot, he still excelled. Uh, I do agree that he didn't need to break the record. It's one of those that would have been nice, but at the same time, this would have been overkill for him. Like he had a great run with the belts. Uh, he did. He he broke. He tied the record. It's probably never gonna happen again. Like he like, he doesn't need it. It would have been way too much. It would have been an overkill. So him dropping it after tying was the right call. But again, even after when he lost that, he still performed phenomenally all year, especially with Shotaro, with Yuma, the tag league, winning the tag belts. He's going to have a great 2021, especially when uh, he's probably going to be a possible contender, not winning the belt. Uh, rookie? Yeah, uh, Asuki Aoyagi, honestly. Uh, he definitely came on his own, even though it was later in the year. He's still grown. Right. He's shown that there is a future for the junior, especially with Dan Tamora, who was actually, if it was a tie, I would give it to either one of them. Right. But yeah, Aoyagi, the. Both of them, Yuma and Asuki, they both improved so much this year that it gives me hope for a better year this year as future as future stars. So the potential that is there, and I we've seen that this year with uh, Asuki Aoyagi. Right. So I hope he does that. I hope he wins that belt to show like yeah, like I've earned this shit. Right. Right. No, I I think he's done a fantastic job. He's definitely come up, but. He he's got a ways to go. I, I think Dan, oh, yeah. Dan I think Dan is a bit more complete of a package. Um, but I would definitely say that um, both of them are still a, a bit away from winning the junior title. But you know that's just it. Is they're they're clawing their way up the ladder. 
And that's the most important part is, is looking like a, a credible contender as you get there. Right. Yes. So, yes, that concludes our awards of 2020. And we are very happy to hear what your thoughts are about who you all thought was the winners of the respected fields of the awards. Uh, you can, again, hit us up on Twitter at AJPW Worldwide, or if you're a member of the Facebook fan group, you're more than welcome to call us out and tell us what you think your picks are. We would be glad to hear it. We will come back to finish up things. Here our interview with Tayo Kea. Uh, this is a Suama Station with Matt and Dave, the official podcast of All Japan Worldwide Fan Group. We will be right back. <laughs> Folks, thank you for joining us. Uh, got Matt and Dave here for the All Japan Worldwide Fan Podcast, Suwama Station. Thank you for joining us. We had a a fantastic time. Honestly, one of the best times that we've had interviewing folks, talking with Tayo Kea. And this is the final part of our interview with Kea. And we just want to tell you how uh, proud we are of being able to talk to him and get a lot of details and cool stories from our, our pal uh, Kea. And we definitely hope to have him back. And we will get to that interview uh, right now. You start feuding with Tenryu, and you guys have these amazing freaking battles. And I think that's about the time you start switching your your gear out uh, to like the red, cool machine-looking gear. I, I I really love those, by the way. And uh, um, you get that big win over Tenryu in uh, summer 2002. And uh, it's not too much further down the road that you start teaming with Kojima. And you guys win the real world tag league. You beat uh, um, it was an emblem. You beat Otani and Tanaka for the real world tag league, uh, uh, ta the the tournament. And uh, I mean, what do you what do you remember teaming with uh, Kojima? I mean, because that's you know not a lot of guys are able to say they're a regular tag team with Kojima for you know x amount of time. But you guys were you know you guys were tight for a, you know a good amount of time. Yeah, man, um, it, it was fun. Um wrestling with him and tagging with him and, and like we we did like the the uh mlw show too also in, in it was like in um sorry, it was the manhattan center i believe it was like in in new york yeah we, we, did, we did that over there um which was uh that was that was fun to do and you know um to finish our tour i, I think we finished our tour and you know flying over there um do that show checking out you know new york city too and that was you know we're, you know it was like a Right after um, you know Twin Towers, like two thousand one and stuff like that. So yeah, just it was a uh, um, it was it was fun. It was cool, but like it just just blows me away about Japanese man. He, <laughs> we fly from Japan all the way to New York, New York City, and where is it? Where does he want to go eat? Freaking Japanese restaurant? Are you fucking serious? Like like, like, <laughs> I was like man, we 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 flew all the way from Tokyo. To New York City, and you, you like you don't want to go get a slice of pizza. You don't want to go get like spaghetti or like, like something Italian or I don't know something very New Yorkers. But we're you were eating. I remember we ate at a freaking Japanese restaurant, and um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Kojima he was he was funny like he was funny like that. But uh, uh, I guess comforting, comforting, right? Yeah, uh, I I just want to uh, jump in with uh, um, uh, was it? Oh, uh, uh, I, I had a side question. I mean, if, if you know, then that's cool. And if you don't, um, but I had always wondered about how did that MLW connection with All Japan, like how did that get hooked up? Do you have any idea about that? Because I'd honestly been wondering that myself for years. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, a quick um, say of Gary Albright, you remember? Um, All Japan wrestler. Okay. So he was, yeah, so. He was um, very good friends with Court Court Bauer, so Court so Court to help out the Wild Samoans in uh, Pennsylvania, 
and of course, Gary was married to, uh, I believe it was Appa's daughter. Um, yeah, so that's, that's where the connection. And so um, I remember uh, Court, every, you know, he'd always talk with, with Gary and like they'd be, e- email, be emailing each other and um, they start emailing me and we'd make small talk here and, here and there. And um, that's where MLW happened. Wow, man, that is so cool. I had no idea about the Albright uh, uh, Bauer connection. And uh, to, to some of the listeners who are not familiar with uh, later 90s, uh, a little you know, like early, very early 2000s, more, more late 90s, uh, All Japan is uh, there's a, a gentleman named Gary Albright. And if you've not seen any of his matches, you need to go to YouTube or get whatever you can get your hands on and watch this guy. He, he is literally, uh, I know, no disrespect to Doc, because I, I love Doc. Steve Williams, Dr. Death, lo- love that man, right? But I also think that Gary Albright is, a, 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 excuse my language, I don't say this very much. I might have to bleep this out, but I don't really care at the moment. Uh, he's a fucking suplex machine, Gary Albright was. I, I loved watching that dude uh, in UWFI. Then eventually he gets over to All Japan and just, mwah, chef's kiss. He's just right where he needs to go. And the the, the time he's there is not very long. And uh, he unfortunately passed away in 2000, if I'm not mistaken. And so, uh, you know, big shout out to uh, the spirit of Gary Albright. Big shout out to Doc, spirit of Doc, their families, their loved ones. Uh, they they may be gone, but their legacy, <laughs> their legacy is going to last forever because they were badasses. And they would had some amazing, phenomenal wrestling work. So we were talking about tagging with Kojima, and uh, you kind of move on to be a, uh, you, you wind up becoming a heel. You wind up working with uh, Taka and uh, Bull Buchanan and uh, uh, Rico and uh, Taro and, uh, you be, I'm sorry, not Taro, uh, uh, you remember uh, uh, R-O-N-D. Uh, roughly obsess and destroy, if I'm not mistaken. It was kind of a, yeah, a particular Gilbert. set of words, but um, yeah. Um, what can you tell us about your time uh, with R O and D? What do you remember of that? <laughs> R O and D, right? And, uh, and same the same guy who made Bat, B A T T, badass translate trading or something. It, it's same same dude, same same guy, man. And like and for both of them, I was like, wait, what? Well, and it, so, I, okay, man, I, I just not, it wasn't our idea. We just kind of go with it. It's, it's very Japanese English, you know, and it, I'm, yeah, I just, it was the same guy who, who, um, who would make all, um, Muto's, uh, tights and stuff and uh, all his show gear and stuff. Same dude. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, man, it, that was, that was a cool time. Um, cool part of my life. It's, uh, so one part is like, you know, I, I blew up. So we were talking about Kojima. Uh, the um, tag team, it was with, uh, against o- Otani, and I blew out my knee. Uh, I blew out my, my ACL during that match. So I, I took a year off, and so when I came back, I came back as, uh, you know, as a heel and stuff, and that's when, um, you know, D'Lo and all those guys, Bobo Cannon, they're all there. So And um, Eki, uh, Umaga, was his uh, other name, um, yeah, WWE name. So, yeah, we kind of tagged up, and um, I met um, Eki. Um, shit, when they they worked for like uh, I forget what was the name of the indie company, FNW, and then they, I thought I did another one, but maybe I'm, I'm wrong. But I met them. So they, they, I met them. Yeah, through Gary, like back in the day. Like they came like back in the nineties. Um, uh, I remember I was, I was hanging out with um, with uh, Gary down at Rapongi. It's like a, you know a good enough part of town in Tokyo. And uh, yeah, I met those two guys, um, and they're, like hanging out, especially Eki. Like we, you know, we talk the story about you know bullshitting different stuff. And um, back then, you know, he's talking about you know trying to get over to all Japan um, pro wrestling, and then of course they went to WWE. They did a uh, three minute warning and stuff. But yeah, um, back to ROD. Yeah, it was a you know it was a big change. Came back and um, I blew up my knee. Um, um, had a year off, like gained a bunch of weight too. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, yeah, it was just like I, I, I wrestled for like with like knee braces because like, I, I wore like long pants for a bit, but I had like yeah, right. I had like these these knee braces, and, you know, on and, like it sucked. Like I just uh, was, like trying to move in, in, in them and stuff, and because uh, I had them on both legs, and because I had both uh, ACL, I, I already had like a blown ACL that I never repaired um for like a few years and then when i blew up my my other leg um, i was like you know i'm gonna do um 
you know, be surgeon both knees at the um, same time period. So, um, yeah, it was a slow uh, process coming back and stuff. But, um, yeah, it was, it was cool. Like, you know, hanging out, you know, doing stuff with talking. It was, it was, it was like a, it was awesome. Like, almost, you know, it was a friendship and just, you know, wrestling with those guys, being on the road with those guys, like a lot of laughs, a lot of good times. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a, it was a good, um, it shit, every part of my, my, my career up there was, was fun and, and good, but, um, yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> I got no complaints. I was, uh, uh, speaking of FMW, you actually competed there for a match. You teamed with Kenta Kobashi against, uh, Hayabusa and Jinsei Shinzaki, but that has been aired on TV. I don't know why that was, but can you tell me about your experience with that match? Team up with Kobashi. They work with guys like Jinsei and Hayabusa. Yeah, that, that was another one too. Um, where it was, you know, man, I, I was I was just lucky, man. I was like, I got to do, you know, cool, amazing things. I remember we did like a, a Corgan Hall show. It was an afternoon show, like twelve o'clock show or something. And then after that, yeah, we planned to go to uh, it's Kawasaki Stadium, I believe it was. And um, yeah, we, we you know Joe over there at Kawasaki Stadium. Um, um, yeah, it was. It was I, I just remember that ring being super freaking hard. Like, <laughs> I did a. I, I did like, a like, like, like no mat, just wood. Oh, it was solid, man. It was, and well, because like I, I was outside the ring, and then I come inside, and like, um, and I, I did a drop kick off the top rope, and it was like one of those uh, Japanese style missile drop kick where you you bump on your back. And I remember I, right. I did it, and I landed on my back, and I was like, "Holy shit!" And it was like somebody just like you know gut punched me, and um, <laughs> yeah, but it was like I mean, yeah, Hayabusa, man, is he was uh, he was awesome to watch, and um, I, I believe I, I had uh, he and I we we his first match coming into all Japan it was a tag match. It was against it was Shiga myself versus Hayabusa and somebody else. But it, it was his first all Japan match in like Osaka or something. But um, yeah, man, those guys, those guys were, were awesome. Like to watch and to, you know, wrestle against, work against. Okay, uh, I'm gonna jump in real fast about why it hasn't been aired yet. So, okay, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I can't remember if it's Samurai or if it's Gaara, but um, the, the, they were going to, some, some because of COVID nineteen and all the the shows, uh, the live shows were, were shut down for X amount of time. They I forget which one of them was like we're gonna upload stuff and oh hey wouldn't you know it we're gonna release this match from uh, ninety seven at their Kawasaki uh, you know show that we've never been able to show and then a week before they pulled it and uh, uh, they they just uh, it's got TV rights all like kind of uh, uh caught up in that we we talked with um brett who is uh is goes by bahu and he does uh fmw uh he, he's very very knowledgeable about fmw he, he's a huge database for fmw he interviewed with us uh, a ways back uh shout out to brett and uh he just uh he talked to us at pretty good length about what was going on and we were talking about it and we're like oh man it's gonna happen and then literally a week later they're like this match is not gonna be uploaded and i think they put up some match with kanimura uh, uh, uh yuki hiro kanimura as a kintano kanimura now but um yeah, that was a, a real trip because I was hoping we were going to get to see that finally because you can watch it on a handy cam, but uh, it doesn't, it's not, it's like not with the TV quality, like uh, the TV cameras kind of quality. Um, let, let's uh, mm -hmm. kind of, uh, uh, let's get back a little bit um, about the Senpai Kohai. So um, there was folks that were training in the dojo right with you, right? Like they're right there, they're, they're either starting out or they're in the system too. And there's teachers, and um, can you kind of tell us a little bit about you know that like not so much the environment, but the the folks around you, like you know you there there's seniors and there's juniors and there's obviously the teachers there, right? And so uh, who were the who were some of the folks that you kind of interacted you know with around that time? Sure, um, yeah, uh, head trainer, uh, head guy was Kobashi, and the Kobashi, um, you yeah, he. And he was just like, he would just go get after it. You know, he was just whatever, you know, pretty much he did everything that that we did, you know, and, um, uh, you know, he trained, you know, really hard and stuff like that. So um, he was the guy that would come in 
um, in the dojo at that time, the elder was, the eldest guy was, uh, um, <laughs> shit, I just did right name. Um, Satoru, God damn it, it just, what is it? This is for my name. Anyway, but there was it was all the all the all Japan guys you pretty much see, you know, Akiyama, Omori, um, Izumida. Um, my roommate at that time was uh, uh Shiga and um Honda, Honda San. Um and God oh, wait, Asako san. Also Asako Asako san was was the, the, the head guy at that time in the dojo. Um, you know, he's an elder guy. And then, you know, uh for training, training days, uh, Kobashi, um, Kobayi-san, another name for him, he'd, uh, he'd come in and, uh, you know, do the training. Inoue-san was another guy that would come in. Um, and, like, our dojo was, it was actually, it's a, um, it's a, it was a pretty, it's a pretty nice, I'd say, upper middle class neighborhood that the dojo was in. And, um, yeah, it was like, you know, at that time, it was like rice, rice patties and everything all around, but, um, it was, it was a pretty nice place, you know, looking back at it and stuff. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, um, it was brutal. And <laughs> it was like, uh, it, it, like, like that was one of the parts of like training too. Back then it was like, you weren't allowed to drink water. So throughout the, whatever, yeah, <laughs> like only during the summertime, we, we get to go drink water like once, but like, you know, whatever, two and a half hours, however long we were training, no water during the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty crazy. I mean, we do runs, we do you know bumping and um, all these different push ups, sit ups, you know, add the different uh, workouts and stuff. But yeah, man, it was like <laughs> it was pretty brutal. Oh, yeah. we we get to uh, before right before the split. Um, you well a little bit before the split. Um, you became a, a world junior heavyweight champion, right? You you got to hold that title. Uh, right when you were uh, coming out of like a year or two after you're coming out of being a rookie and you're still considered a junior heavyweight. And so uh, what what do you remember about your, I think it's, did you have one or two world junior heavyweight title reigns? Because I mean, you, you know, I, I'm a little fuzzy because I think you had one, but uh, I think you'd know better. I think it was just, you, know, you might probably know better, actually. <laughs> yeah, man. Like I remember, I mean, I, I wrestled, I remember wrestling, um, uh, Daisuke, Daisuke Ikeda and then the, the Tokyo Dome, right? Uh, that was our first to Tokyo Dome ex experience was against him. I think we were like the second match or we're, yeah, we were the second match of that show. Um, yeah, it was, it, I, just, I mean, I remember like wrestling against Ogawa uh, for the title, you know, and um, um, Ogawa-san, he, he was like one of those, those guys actually that he took care of me a lot, like uh, outside of wrestling, a lot. Um, yeah, and pretty really good uh, relationship with him. Uh, he's one of those guys I always looked up to um, in all Japan and just in general, you know, in, in wrestling in Japan. Um, but um, yeah, it was a pretty awesome experience, of course. You know, but to, just get to get to do that, you know. Um, yeah, not much I can say. Like I'm, my memory on that is kind of, I don't remember too much. But uh, yeah. It is all good because uh, we have uh, we have some friends out there uh, at uh, PudaLove.com that have uh, you know have this kind of information just readily available. And I'm looking at it right now. And the one time you did win, it was from Ogawa, and you vacated in '98 to become a heavyweight, right? And so I mean uh, uh, that's definitely a move up because uh, I, I'm not sure if a lot of folks are familiar, but uh, junior heavyweight wrestling uh, is not seen as a, as big of a scale. Uh, uh, the main events are usually heavyweights. Heavyweights are what build uh, are what a wrestling promotion is built around. Uh, that's you know, Tenryu leaving All Japan to go to war. It was credible because he's a huge star and he's a heavyweight. Heavyweights tend to be bigger in a, a box office and so um do you have any memories of when uh you started wrestling as a heavyweight um yeah um yeah no. <laughs> yeah just like um you know that that was um like i mean what what this there was i mean there, there wasn't that big of a difference right you know going um going from uh because you, you you know you didn't always wrestle you know when you wrestle single matches over you you're gonna wrestle everybody you don't just wrestle 
you know, the smaller guys and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yes, yeah, so like the one story I, I can talk about is, or I remember is like, um, so when, when that happened, when they bumped me up to heavyweight was all of they were, they were talking about, okay, okay, you, you know, you, maybe you move, uh, uh, heavyweight, you know, soon. And I took it as like, okay, we're, <laughs> you're telling me I'm going to go to heavyweight. So I think it was after one of my wrestling matches, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go. It was like an interview uh, with, uh, you know, with the press. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to go wrestle heavyweight. And then so after it was like, they put it in the newspaper or the magazine that, you know, that I'm going to go to heavyweight. And then <laughs> the office was like, no, no, not now. We're going to have you do it down the road. But since I already kind of proclaimed it, you know, so that they. <laughs> As well. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember. Like, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I guess I wasn't, I spoke too early. But, uh, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, no, most definitely. Uh, uh, Matt, did you? Oh, yeah. Uh, speaking of moving up to the, the heavyweight division, uh, you have won your singles title, like, as a heavyweight to uh, 2006 as a Triple Crown champion. They also made you the first junior, the person to hold the junior and the Triple Crown Championship in your career in all Japan. Uh, how was that for you, winning that belt for the first time? Oh, man, it was awesome, you know. And then especially, like, uh, like having to, like, wrestle, like, you know, all those good, just wrestling all the different guys and going to the different companies. And especially, like, all, like, you know, really stiff and tough matches were, like, with, um, like, tenor, I'd say. Like, so... Oh, like I, I come out there with laces across my face, you know, finishing, finishing, like I'm just like, my chest is all purple, like my back is sore, like, and then just like having to work my way, you know, up and just, you know, getting the opportunity and um, the chance and stuff. So um, it, it, was a, it was an awesome experience. And, you know, like I, I didn't know until after, like about that part of history. Like I thought, um, I thought Misawa san like, you know, I, you know about about having like you know junior uh, junior champion and then uh, becoming a triple crown champion. Um, yeah, it was, it's, it's a pretty cool thing to be you know part of that history. Yeah, yeah, that was very well earned. Like you, like you busted your ass and you made this big accomplishment. And out of your uh, three triple crown championship matches, uh, which one was the more memorable for you? Um. I say like the, the first one was this, you know going with uh, with Kojima, uh, yeah with Kojima was like was like the, the one that was just you know it was, it was a hot ass arena too but um, but um, yeah it, it was it was like the most memorable. Noah, right? Noah runs a dome show, right? And mm -hmm. I think it's called Destiny. It's two thousand five, and you are on it wrestling uh, Misawa and Ogawa, guys that you're totally familiar with and you're wrestling them with uh, uh, with with uh, um, with Muto at your side, right? So this is huge because this is one of the only matches that we get where you get to have Muto and Misawa who are, are friends in real life, but in, in wrestling, they have no business with each other until like this moment and so i mean do you do you remember anything of that can you take us back uh to anything that you you know can recall yeah man. um that was like that was another one too where so originally um from what i understand that was actually supposed to have been muto and kawada versus uh misawa and um yeah got, yeah it was like um but kawada didn't want to do it so uh, beyond that, so when they're, they're like, "Hey, do you, you know, do you want to uh, wrestle this match?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. It'd be, you know, it'd be pretty, pretty awesome. You know, um, pretty, um, you know. After, of course, after you know all that split and everything, but you know, I was always friends with um, Ogawa son, but we, were, we never really talked business. You know, um, it was, uh, but yeah, it was, it was, and then that was actually you know, seeing um, if you guys remember that the referee was uh, Joe. Joe Joe Higuchi, so he was like another guy that I always uh, looked up to, uh, and uh, he was good friends with uh, King Yao too. So like it just seemed Joe and everyone and just hanging out with all those guys, um, it, it was you know it was awesome you know it, it was cool. But of course 
if you, if you guys remember or if you watch that match, like this, that first, like, you know, when, um, when Muto and Masao get into the ring, it's just, oh man, it's just like, just that, you know, they both step into the ring and face each other. And it's, just, it's just like, you, know, you can hear the, that crowd just pop and it was like, oh shit, you know, like that's every wrestler's, that's what you aim to do, right? Have that, that crowd pop with you, but you know, you got thousands and thousands of people, like, it's it's just it's an awesome feeling. But that's got to be a hell of a feeling. I mean, really. I mean, Jesus. You know, they that that's like a, a, a dream match, and you're involved with it, and it's like, my God. You know, because that that was a huge freaking dome show. I I totally remember uh, uh, seeing that. I think I might actually have that on DVD. But uh, yeah, that crowd was freaking huge. It totally was, and uh, I mean, they they ate that up. And then that was the same show they had uh, Kinsuke versus uh, Kobashi. With the, the oh, machine right. gun chops, it's just like Jesus. Oh, the chop fist, right? <laughs> oh, it was brutal. Yeah, like, uh, just, oh, uh, yeah. Just, I mean, I think that hurt their, each other's souls, man. It was just like it was that was brutal. Just, like, just watching it, I was, ooh, 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 you know, just yeah, I, I could feel it, man. It was it was yeah, that was intense. My gosh, you know the like, th- those two going at it, you know, it's just ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. Ugh. So towards the, yes. the the later part of the career of your career. Um, you're mostly doing a lot of tag work, right? You're still doing singles. Obviously, you won the Champions Carnival 2012, but um, you start tagging. Well, I mean, after Kojima, you've got uh, 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 four different guys that you're tag team champions with. Um, just maybe give us a quick couple of impressions. Uh, um, I-, I think you called him Eki, the Jamal. You, you yeah. won the tag yeah. belts with him. Uh, what, what do you remember yeah. of him? Oh, man, he was... I mean, like for you know, for a big man, most athletic guy I've ever seen. I mean, that guy could do a nip up, man. I've seen that guy do like a like a like a moon assault off off like the second rope, you know. And uh, man, he he was he he was he was athletic, and he was funny too. Like we used to, we used to just like you know, we just be cracking jokes and you know while we were wrestling and stuff like that. He was he was a, he was a fun guy. Um, yeah, it, rest in peace, man. That, it, they, that was like a, a huge loss. Of course, he was a you know big star in WWE, and you know going on, you know going on to become a big star. Now, actually, I was just talking about this uh, we're, the other day. I was bullshitting with with one of my friends, who's not even a you know not a you know non wrestler and stuff like that. But we're talking about yeah, we're talking about um, you know, uh, Trump, and then like, I was like, <laughs> you know, my friend I was just showed his picture. You know, he, he did his whole thing with uh, Trump and stuff like that. So I pulled up the video. Yeah, because it was yeah, it was, it was like um, uh, Vince McMahon, Donald Trump, and uh, who's the other guy? Yeah, yeah, you guys remember that? That is pretty funny now that I, I mean, because you know, uh, through 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 you know whatever you know the political climate's been the last few years, that's honestly been like one of the the, the things that literally nobody talks about anymore is the fact that he was in the, the he was in WrestleMania, he's in the Hall of Fame in the whole nine yards. It's right. it's so yeah, pretty we, we funny. We don't talk about that, baby. <laughs> It's, it's just it's damn funny you know it really is, yeah, it is um, funny, man. so yeah. Uh, um yeah so uh the next guy is uh toshiaki kwada right my my just the, the dude yeah. right the dude mr black and yellow i mean you know Tina, yeah. you got it first but um you tag with him your world tag team champions with him what do you remember of uh, teaming with kawada um not a lot of talking no. <laughs> 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 but uh Man, he, he was actually he, so like all throughout growing. Uh, he was one of those guys like as I, as I was rising up. <laughs> you you uh, maybe you've heard other stories <laughs> about him, but man, he was known as being like this. I mean, not this. I mean, to foreigners, he was like really standoffish, and uh, even to other Japanese boys, he was he was, he was kind of a prick. You know, being truthful. And but after the split, after like a few years, um, man, it was like. This whole this one hotel that I was staying at, there was like a um, a restaurant downstairs, and he'd come by and he yeah he'd go have a have a couple of drinks, and then one day he calls me up and says, hey, um, you want to come downstairs and uh, have you know drink with me? And I, I thought he was like fucking around with me. And I was like, what, 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 huh? Wait, what? And he goes, come downstairs. And then I was like, okay. And then come downstairs, had a few drinks in him. He starts talking English to me. He's like just you know, just talking bullshit. I was like, I was just. Is this happening right now? Is this and then, yeah, I remember. Okay. Him, uh, yeah, he was, um, but he was a real, a quiet, reserved guy, and um, I, you know, I, there's a lot that I, I respect about him. You know, he was a, um, 
you know, he's a diehard, I don't know, Japanese wrestler. And, um, but I, I, I saw like in his later years, even to now, like he's, man, he's, he's just chilled out. I think he, I don't know. He just, uh, from where he was when he was wrestling to now is a, two different guys, you know, it's just, and it's pretty, uh, and he has a pretty uh, successful um, restaurant from what I understand. He's always invited me to go over there. Um, never got to, but yeah, it, uh, wrestling with him, uh, it, was, it, was, it was good. It was an awesome experience. Even that I'm wrestling against him and wrestling with him was, was awesome. Yeah. I, I hope one day I get to try out his, um, his uh, restaurant too. Cause I mean, you know, uh, I hear it's really good and, and I would, yeah. it would just be an honor yeah, just to I, get in there, you know? <laughs> Right. So, uh, uh, okay, moving a light along, uh, Minoru Suzuki, bad man. You team up with him in Gudentai, and you guys are tag team champions while he's uh, still in All Japan. What do you remember of uh, Minoru Suzuki? Um, he was a good, he was a good brother of mine. Um, he, he, he was um, re- watching him wrestle, wrestling against him, wrestling with him. He, he was, it was fun. Um, but he, he was like one of those guys, he, he went to like, he goes for kind of like the beat of his own drum kind of deal, you know? Yeah, so it was, it, yeah, it, like he, um, yeah, he, like whatever tempo, like I'd say like the other person, the other, you know, who we were wrestling against would start to do, you know, he'd change it up, right? And so um, I'd, I'd say like he changed like, um, change up their timing, I would say. Uh, kind of hard to explain, but um yeah, he was a he was an interesting guy, and he still is. Like uh, every time I I've gone back to Japan, I always I hit him up, or I swing. He has a store over in, in Shibuya. Like I'll swing by, but uh, yeah, he's a, he's a fun guy, and like we we even uh, we we'd spar like before uh, before matches, like you know submission. He was more like a car gops guy. Like you know, I'm a mixer of amateur wrestling, and jujitsu, and stuff like that. So uh, we'd always like train before the matches and stuff. But yeah, um, as a wrestler, yeah, awesome, phenomenal. Yeah, the 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 Carl Gotch pedigree is like deep in that guy. But I mean, that's what makes him so damn good is because you know Gotch, you know he he pretty much set up the entire training system uh, for New Japan like what was it like almost fifty years ago. So I mean, you know, when you're getting that guy and he's in your ear and and, and uh, uh, Gotch is like this guy is like one of the best I've ever seen, which you know you would go on about. I mean it's it's mm-hmm. not surprising there. It's it's really not. Uh, lastly, let's talk about uh, a guy who um, I'm hoping he's doing better health wise because you know um, he he's a very unique individual, much like yourself, got to train in the all Japan dojo. Uh, Akebono, right? Uh, Ake Bono, uh, who I have a, a tremendous amount of respect for, uh, uh, for folks who are not familiar with Ake Bono. Uh, he started out as a, if I'm not mistaken, he's a basketball player, and, and uh, he <laughs> got his way over to uh, Sumo and uh, became a huge, huge deal in Japan. I, I mean, like, I can't use huge enough to illustrate how big of a deal uh, he was and became a, a Japanese national because he was such a he was so huge and he was become so ingrained into Japanese culture that they just loved him and embraced him and he got to train over in the All Japan Dojo and uh, within his first year he gets a, a match in the WWE while he's not signed to the WWE is very interesting kind of situation there <laughs> I, as somebody I'd love to interview uh, at some point about you know that because that's a very peculiar situation but um you know uh what what can you tell us about uh t- teaming up with bono uh, what was that like you know that was a um it was an awesome experience you know we, we, we connected of course um because you know he was uh you know him being of course from hawaii uh, but yeah he was i mean huge star like you said huge star in japan um grand champion of, of sumo which is um I mean, that's the top of the top. Everybody knows. Every single person in Japan knows who he is. Um, and, of course, you know, he, he, what he did, the, you know, go back and do the MMA or kickboxing route first. And, uh, right, yeah. and then uh, not that successful in it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then, and then so he, you know, he moved over to pro wrestling. But um, I remember who helped him, who, who would, you know, help him a lot was, uh, was Jamal. Eki. so um, you know, trying to you know, you know, teach them like a kind of like like big man wrestling, 
and stuff like that. Um, but man, he was he was a hard worker. You know, he he was a hustler because you know he'd do all Japan, then um, he'd do all these like bunch of indie shows too, and then he had like you know autograph signings. He was a he was always a busy guy. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was. I got to you know he was another guy too, like because of who he was, and um, who, you know he opened up a lot of other doors for me too, like um, just around Japan. Um, but yeah, we just touring out with him, and it, it was uh, lots of fun. Um, uh, but yeah, he of course, um, of course, he had all his 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 uh, aches and pains, you know, his previous you know his injuries prior to you know from being in sumo and stuff. Yeah, been moving over to pro wrestling, but. Um, yeah, he worked hard, yeah. and you know, I, I, I haven't got to see him um, in the uh, the past couple of years and, and stuff like that. But you know, last I, I did go, I guess, last time I did visit him, I think it was like two, three years ago, um, when I was over in Japan, um, I went to stop by and see him and stuff. But um, yeah, I always wish, I always wish him the best. You know? Yeah, definitely. He's a, a very interesting figure in uh, Japanese sports history. Uh, I mean, certainly right. there have been a number of, uh, you know, gaijin that have gone over to do sumo and uh, they, you know, for better or worse, wind up becoming, um, they either become a pro wrestler or they wind up becoming, you know, the, the grand champion of the Okazuna. Um, as one of them is uh, John Tenta, like Earthquake, right? Earthquake, uh, not right. a lot of people know this, but he trained in the All Japan Dojo. He spent like the first two years of his career, either when he went home to Canada doing like independent shows, but he's trained in, in, in All Japan, just like uh, um, the, the what, what does he go by? Um, Ming, right? Ming, he trained in That's the it. All Japan Dojo too, as well as the the Barbarian. Nobody knows these things, you know, but it's it's interesting to kind of, when you discover these things, you're like, my goodness, you know? I mean, you can see uh, 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 Ming's face on the, like, Champions Carnival 80 poster, right? And it's like, boom, there's his face right before he heads over to the, the States and starts making a killing, right? As, like, this, you know, resident monster and, and all this just huge legacy gets built around his reputation of just being a bad mofo. Nobody, you know, messes with Ming, you know. Uh, Haku, right? He winds up being tag champions with Andre, right? I mean, you know, that he, he just has this, you know, this strange, you know, career. And, and he still occasionally does, you know, uh, shows and whatnot. But, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting, you know, who comes out of the All Japan Dojo. You know, it really is. Well, outside of wrestling, what were your favorite things to do in, like, Hawaii and Japan? Like, like that? Okay. Yeah, man. Um, shit, Japan wise, yeah. Shit, when I was younger, of course, like, you know, you want to go out and party. <laughs> you want to go out and drink. And, and uh, it, was, it was Rapungi, man. Like, uh, when I was uh, when I was coming up there, it was, yeah, everybody wanted to, everybody talked about, okay, go to down the Rapungi. That was a spot it was where all the foreigners kind of hung out. It was like, a, you know, very mixture of people. Last few years that, that I went down there, I was like, I mean, I didn't even go down there. It's just, it's a different, it's a different vibe, and it's just not the same when I when I when I first went there. Um, it was doing that, and then um, um, I mean, but the, one of the favorite spots actually I love in Japan too was, you know, um, opposite of that is Kyoto. So I don't know if you got to go there, Matt, when you were there. But uh, uh, well, Kyoto, I had not actually. No, uh, I was mostly in Tokyo. But I did go to Rapungi. I went to Shibuya, Akihabara, stuff like that. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I was also I was also ill during my time there. <laughs> oh, it sucks. Okay, yeah, it was, it was Kyoto was like this, you know, it's 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 a, a lot of temples and and um, so that was like one of my favorite spots that I love going to and um, yeah, I love I like I like the um, I love the, like I say I love Tokyo like the big city you know like, you know subways and everything else and massive people you know crowding into like a small spots but and then i also like the 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 opposite of that like the countryside like um you know the the old japanese end you know that we you were staying on at the you know on the road and you know it's just you know it's, um sleeping on the floor is just I, I dug that part of, it, of japan too it's like man um yeah it's just uh and in hawaii it was just um um shit had hanging out with my buddies uh Beach, you know, it's like well, what is what is Hawaii, right? Sunshine, sunshine and rainbows, um, right? And then, uh, <laughs> and then, right, right, right. I mean, how 
Uh, that's another story with that name, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> yep. Right, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 They, they, yeah. They dropped that some years back. The rainbow part of it, right? But then, um, uh, uh, but then, yeah. It's just, and then, so it was like, um, shit. I, I think it's like two thousand. Uh, what was that? Two thousand five. I got into jujitsu. So like, and I moved over to Maui. So like, that was part of my. Uh, big part of my uh, it's like my hobby and my you know the things that I love to do like you know with and with friends and stuff like that I, I, so I like the, the, all the aspects about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that I, I still have fun with or not as much fun right now but um, yeah it's just a part of my life um, uh, did you yeah. have any uh, sorry uh, did you have any uh, funny uh, dojo stories when you're there because usually like when people train in to wrestling you get like a funny story too were there any where you were training in the dojo Oh man, I, there, I know there's a bunch. Um, just say what I. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the dojo. All Japan dojo is what there was always. Um, shit. I mean, there's a, there's a couple. Of, like one one of the stories was there was um, a story that there was a ghost in the, in the dojo, and everybody <laughs> would say that they would they would hear somebody. So the way how the dojo was set up, it's it's a huge house. So half the house is like a big training area with the ring inside, weights and everything. And other part, part other half is a house. So the story was like, especially my old roommate was a Shiga san. Shiga, he would always say like, "Oh, Kia san, uh, somebody called me inside the uh, in the dojo training area, and I go nobody there." And, and uh, like they're all they're all scared shitless of this. And he's like, they always ask me, like, "No, nobody, nobody call you, nobody." Um, nobody, I was like, I'm gonna nod, I don't hear shit. And then, um, <laughs> that was like one part. That, I mean, there's a bunch of stories, but and the other one was so when you're a young boy, uh, you know, coming up, you, you, you have to answer the phone call. I mean, you have to, every time they would, they would, somebody would call the dojo, you have to go over there and, and pick it up. And, and, uh, no matter what time of the night, right? And then you gotta, gotta get drunk to call at three o'clock in the morning, you gotta run your ass downstairs and go pick up the phone. Well, like, um, it was, I was roomed with uh, Shiga-san. And, of course, so we were each other, but he was such a nice guy. Every time the phone would ring, he would get up for me because I would act like I'm sleeping. I'd hear it. I was like, fuck, I'm going to get up. And um, he'd go downstairs. He'd answer the phone calls for me. But then he also, another part of him, he had really bad snoring. So, so like, I remember in the <laughs> middle of the night, like, he'd be snoring. And, you know, we're sleeping on the floor. And I remember I, I grabbed his nose a few few times and he you know, you start choking. <laughs> and like, I go back to act like I'm sleeping. So, man, it's a, you know, it's a mixture of stories. But, yeah, I mean, it's like he's just, um, I don't know. It's just uh, <laughs> part of dojo life, you know, ups and downs. Uh, that's that's great. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Um, it, it, and uh, um, we, we, we were just talking about uh, 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 jiu-jitsu, right? Jiu-jitsu is a big part of your life. Um, is there anything you'd, you'd like to, to share on that front, I mean, it's it's something that you're into right now. It, you know, obviously in limited capacity, but I mean, uh, so it's a 2000. I think you said 2005, right? Is when you started with the jujitsu. So, like, um, t tell us about you know uh, um, what kind of relationship like y you have with it. I mean, it, it's obviously something that you know you really are digging. But I mean, uh, some folks may not know that you know you uh, uh, you're. A <laughs> I feel awful because I, I I keep wanting to say that you're a brown belt, but I can't remember which belt you are. <laughs> but I know that you've been working at it for a while, and uh, you know mm -hmm. it takes time to get up there i mean uh, um a lot of may, a lot of folks may not know but uh ed o'neill right al bundy right i love the guy to death i was a huge marriage with right. fan he i think he just got his black belt in uh, uh uh the gracie right one of the gracie uh systems and he just got it like maybe four or five years ago and he's been practicing for i want to say like 30 years so i mean it, it, it yeah, takes it some time while. i mean so but like please you know what would you care to share about you know bj Brazilian jiu-jitsu and you yeah, just, uh, so yeah, I, I do have my, my black belt. You know, it, it was one of those things I, I did. I, I don't think I got it as quickly too because I was it was inconsistent. You know, I, because I'd always be um, on the road, tra um, you know, going back and forth to Japan. So um, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things that I, it was really, you know, it was like you know I come back from Japan, um, and I, you know just. I always loved, like, you know, of course, wrestling, you know, wrestling growing up. But um, it was just like one of those places that you can go kind of 
or you're doing it you kind of just escape you know mentally you're not thinking about anything anything else and um uh, um yeah it was just um i got my black belt a couple years ago um um yeah and just, i know um one of the parts is um so uh, my teacher is uh his name is luis heredia um his name of my school is uh, his name of the school i train at is mawa jiu-jitsu but so luis was hicks and gracie's like best student so he him and, and hickson came to the states together and i, I think luis was like a, a purple belt at that time and um and shit, fun fact story uh i remember luis telling me um the anjo story you guys know about the anjo story I was actually just about to bring up the Anjo story because I mean, yeah. if, if you follow, even if you follow just mixed martial arts side of that, right, you still heard about it. Yeah, I was trying to tell my story, and the, the fun part that I, I think nobody else um, got the experience as far as knowing Luis and knowing Anjo, and so having both their stories told, right, and two different stories, <laughs> which is true. I don't, I don't know. So like the story, the basic story is like. Uh, Luis is is, is uh, having a, a class. I think he's having like a beginner like jujitsu class. He's teaching, and Anjo comes in with a bunch of press, and you know he wants to fight. Um, he wants to throw down with 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 Hickson, and so um, Luis is telling me he you know, he didn't know what to do, so he calls Hickson on the phone. Uh, Hickson comes running down like I think Hickson was just like in a white beater uh, tank top and then, like some sweats. And you know he they want to uh, he um Anjo wants to throw down Hickson says no I I want to um I want to like you know you know let's do this let's make a like a uh, like a, let's make some money on this pretty much and let's you know make a make a show out of this but uh, Anjo didn't want to do it um they kick all the press out they close up all the windows and they go at it and when the everything's opened back up they let the press back in Anjo's you know. He's he's a he's a bloody mess, and you know there's you know Hickson is the, the clear like winner. So um, and it's pretty much I mean it's almost what Andre told me, and then it's, you know and it's, of course Louis Louis aside, but you know um, I think yeah it was <laughs> it was a uh, it was a bad thing right on uh, on uh, on Andrew's part. So. But yeah, it, 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 it was, it's, it's a big kind of like, it, MMA pro wrestling history, I guess you want to call it. Like it's it's a it's a big story, right? Uh, right. Mm. Yeah. Again, that was a, a pretty big one, uh, uh, most definitely, just because um, it, it was very rare at that time where uh, you see somebody from Japan going over to the states and going like, "No, we're we're gonna do this right now." Most of the time. Everything is kind of confined in Japan. You know, the fighters are going to come in Japan. They're going to fight in Japan. But this time, it's Anjo going over to um, the U.S., which you really don't see very often. Right. What would you say was the one match, if you had to pick one match, that made you go, I'm at the top of my career. Like, this, like, I am, I'm a star. Like, I am the star. I'm the top guy. What match made you feel like you were, like, you made it as, like, a someone to, like, look up to you, in a way? <laughs> I mean, all, you know, it's like thinking back with, with you know my first match with Muto, like that was like that was awesome. Like I, I man, I, I could I couldn't tell you which match we did it, but I mean there's times like I mean I took I took it all in, you know, like like I remember that you know being back in the dressing room at like a like a dome show and just like right. seeing the crowd and then like you know just looking at the time and then looking at the card and then like, where you're coming up and then just as the card moves up and then you know, as it gets closer, and then you know, like I, you know, you got your little rituals that you do, like my, you know, stretching out, warming, stretching, warming. Um, I wasn't super religious, but I'd, I'd always say like a like a prayer before I go out. Um, right. But yeah, man, it's just like you know, getting on that stage and like the smoke popping up and just you know, just walking through it, just man, it's just um, yeah, it's it all, it all awesome. So I, I couldn't say there was like one particular moment that I can remember that's in. Um, Okay, yeah, I've made it, but I mean, uh, it was all pretty awesome. Even, even sometimes, like even like doing like, like I said, like those house shows, those small shows, it's, you know, just getting getting to say like you, you know you you're entertaining, you're you're wrestling in front of people, like yeah, it's 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 pretty cool, man. All right, I, I got I got one last one, but this one's a fun one. Okay, um, we we talk about 
you know, the Matt was asking about like the 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 match where you kind of think you're like, hey, ma, top of the world, right? But what about the? Do you remember? Is there a, a like the funnest match? Like you know, you were working with guys that it was just like, oh man, it's it's like a, a breeze because you know wrestling, you know, it's very physical. You know, obviously it takes a, a good amount of communication, right, and psychology. But um, I'm sure that there was guys that at a time you were like working with or you were like cool with maybe like a tag match where you're like, oh, man, this is going to be fun because these guys, you know, it's really easy to work with them. Um, is there any match that you would say like, you know, you had a great time or it was like a fun match? Anything like that? Shoot, so, um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Um, gosh, there's a guy, there's a wrestler I, I can't. Um, <laughs> I can't think of his name right now. Damn it! He came over with um, with Tenru, and he was a big guy, and he was a former former sumo wrestler too. And <laughs> we used to okay, so I just side you. So we used to always we was like, man, <laughs> we looked across the ring. It was like Eki and me, Jamal and me, across the ring, and we were like, Fuck, this, this motherfucker looks high, and uh, <laughs> like like he's smoking weed. And so we were like, we looked across the ring, like, yeah. And so we so we his Nickname, gosh, Arashi. Arashi is his name. So we we, we, used, to, <laughs> we, we used to look across the ring. Yeah, we we like we look across the ring and like, man, we just motherfuckers high. And then we, so we used to say as a joke, we used to call him Smokey, like just you know not to his face, but just behind the back. And then of course, right, he gets busted for um for smoking weed. And we like, then we see him after like, oh shit, you holding out on us? And then <laughs> like, he's like, and then, yeah, it was just like, I don't know. That was like one of those things, that like, inside joke that we used to always like make this joke about him, like being high and stuff like that and like looking across at him. And then, yeah, and then he gets busted for weed. So <laughs> like, oh shit, he really was high. Because we just, you know, hot for a really kind of deal. But yeah, man, it was like, it was one of those, yeah. Us and, yeah. Us and Smokey. Oh my God. Yeah, I, um, I had read about that. <laughs> And I had heard about how much they got him with, and it was like he he was um, he was tagging. He had been tagging with Muto, and he was kind of getting up right. to the upper mid card. I think he ch challenged for the triple crown, and and, and things were kind of up for him because most of his career he had spent sort of in, in like in the mid lower mid card, right? Because he he started out in all Japan trainee and left to go to SWS. He goes to War, and then eventually he comes back to all Japan. But I mean, he had things going right where he wanted them. And then all of a sudden, like, yeah, you know, he got busted with weed and that destroyed his career. And he kind of, you know, showed up, you know, here and there. But, man, Arashi and the weed thing. My God. Man, um, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a, like, that was a story for like years. Like, we were like, yeah, my God, this fucking guy's high, man. And then we're like, <laughs> we're just looking at his eyes. And then, you know, after a while, it, just, it, just, it was a joke. And it was an inside joke, but we never thought anything of it. And then, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but but match wise, is there is there anything like a, a match like a, any tag matches or anything where like a, you know you like you just had like a, like it was fun. It was just a relatively like an easy night. You know, I've heard some wrestlers say, "Well, I was working with." Uh, <laughs> I hate to go there because uh, uh, shows what shows I've been listening to, but um, I work with like a uh, uh, Midnight Express or something. Oh, okay, well, shit, the night I get the night off essentially because these guys, you know, so easy to work with, right? Um, was yeah. there anybody so, that it was like, yeah, sorry, yeah, the I'd say like the Canon Express, uh, Doug, uh, Doug Furness, uh, Danny Crawford, man, like those guys coming up, like you know, because uh, D Doug was, I mean, not Doug, uh, Danny, Danny was if if, if he kind of um hear people like talk about all Japan pro wrestling and different wrestlers like guys that are like really um you know smart to the game and smart to pro wrestling it was like uh, danny's name comes up a lot danny crawford and um yeah he, he was fun to work with and he was fun to watch um because he can go from like serious to like comedy and um yeah it's just like i, I can remember him like like he was wrestling against uh, him and Doug were wrestling against Giant Kamala and, and Abdullah the Butcher, and of course Doug comes running out. Music, you know, their, their music they're playing. Doug comes running out, and then you know you don't see Danny, you don't see Danny, and then like, they're looking, they're looking, and like, here comes Danny coming running out. He gets in a ring and he's got you know toilet paper hanging out of his the, at the back of his trunks, you know, kind of deal. <laughs> and toilet paper like stuck to his shoe, like his shoe and stuff like that, but. 
I don't know. It's, it's, it's bullshit like that. It, 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 man, it, it makes it so, so much fun. I, I really appreciate everything. We, we, we've we actually gone on a, a, like quite a bit longer than I thought but we were going to have this nailed down. But I, I feel like we've had a good time, you know, besides the technical yeah, feedbacks. Man. So, um, no, I, I really appreciate you coming on and talking with us. Um, I hope maybe we can do this again sometime because, I mean, you know, I'm sure that you've got some stories that you can share that are just like mind blowing to uh, folks that are just getting uh, into all Japan, uh, all Japan from the nineties, it kind of gets up to you right around the late nineties and it gets to the two thousands Moodle era. And obviously you're, you know, a piece of that. And, you know, uh, uh, you went through this like fantastic window of time where you got to see and be exposed to some of the, 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 what they quote, you know, uh, would say the, the four pillars, right? The four pillars right. era of, of all Japan to the Muto era, right? Right up until about, you know, a, a couple years back, you know, and, um, you know, you've got this awesome perspective and we're so happy that you could come on and share it with us. Despite the difficulties, this was a, it was a great time. I learned so much. Plenty of laughs, plenty of fun stories, and I really hope we can work with you again in the future. Is that would be that would be great? Yeah, man, sure, guys. Um, yeah, had fun. Um, thanks again for inviting me, um, Dave, Matt. Um, yeah, um, anytime, man. Just uh, hit me up, give me a holler. If you want to talk about something or some interesting ideas? And yeah, I'm down for it. You know, I don't talk wrestling too much nowadays, and, and um, as you can see, like. And my, my memory for wrestling is like, man, I, I can I can remember the the good times where like a certain matches like ah, I'm Jeff Gale, I gotta pick my brain, you know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man, it's a uh, had fun. Thank yeah, you. you know, and, and and totally. If you get any ideas on like uh, uh you know stories, like something you like, click. Oh shit, you know what? This would be really good. If you'd like to send us uh ideas or, or even just uh uh you know some uh, some you know memories or some good stories you can remember you don't even necessarily need to, to skype call us if you just you know record it you can send it we would be delighted to have it on the show or just you know share it with our uh, our fans and uh, you know again i can't say enough thank you so much for for coming on uh we are uh we want to say thanks yeah. to taya Kao. we want to say thanks to uh the chair shot uh radio network that this is going to be going on uh we hope that you're checking out all the other cool stuff that the chair shot is checking out uh tournaments and all kinds of cool stuff going over on the other side of the pacific your wwe aew uh we want to make sure that you're checking us out at ajpw world uh on twitter and that you're in the facebook group the all japan worldwide facebook group uh, where this whole thing all got started. I uh, hope you folks will check out the English commentary that we should be setting up by the, hopefully by the, the time you're hearing this. Um, uh, <laughs> on our, it's been kind of a hump. Uh, uh, I won't go into it, but uh, we should have that yeah. completed for the, the 2020 Champions Carnival. And, uh, you know, we're so delighted that you folks are getting into All Japan. Uh you know, the, there's some fantastic work that I highly encourage that you go and check out of my man, Kea. Um, I, I really think that you got to watch this guy, if only for the fact that, uh, you know, he is somebody that is there. He's teaming with Muto. He, he's uh, uh, facing against Tenryu and Kawada. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he's had a very storied career. And uh, I, I highly encourage you folks to check out um, anything of his on YouTube. But... If nothing else, remember uh, to go check out some videos of uh, uh, Gary, of uh, the Albright and Doc, and as well as hey, go look up some James Blear, okay? Go watch yourself some Hawaiian wrestling, because you know what? That's probably on YouTube, too. So, I mean, have at it. You know, get yourself some uh, uh, wrestling goodness, because, uh, you know, uh, we're going through rough times, but we'll all get through it. Wrestling was there then, and wrestling will be here you know, pretty much through, you know, whatever cataclysms we encounter. So from all of us, thank you, folks. Take care. Godspeed. Kea, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us, man. We really hope to have you on again sometime. God bless you, and we hope you have an awesome kick-ass 2021. So we want to just give a uh, shout-out, some plugs to everybody, because as we've mentioned before, it takes a village to do this kind of operation. First off, we want to give a shout out to Pudo Love 
and Cage Match for helping us out with all the info when we are not able to go and sort of hunt things down on ourselves and just makes it a lot easier to check out the resources that are already available to us and we definitely want to acknowledge them and tell them how great they are because that makes our job just that much more manageable we also want to give a shout out to all the folks on twitter that are also part of that awesome community of japanese pro wrestling and translating and some of these folks are from different parts of the world you know patrick robert our buddy smiley that's over in the uk we have just we we have a great time talking and discussing all japan and you know ex exchanging information trading ideas trading thoughts and you know feelings about what's going on about the modern wrestling society you know in 2021 so we just want to acknowledge those folks and say thank you for doing the what you do because it's awesome and fantastic it helps us out we do do we do uh, a bit of our own detective work and go on to various sites and you know twitter accounts and pkdx and looking at different things to get our information and we just want to say thank you to all those sources out there we also want to send a shout out to all of you who are a part of the facebook group the all japan worldwide fan group on our facebook if you're not a member of that you need to get on over you need to sign up and don't forget to answer the security questions so we can let you in no problems and uh, we're hoping that you're also following us on our twitter account again that's at ajpw worldwide we hope you're subscribed to our youtube as well just be sure to look for all japan worldwide fan group we also want to uh, say thank you to the chair shot radio network for hosting us on twitter you can find us on twitter I'm sorry, not Twitter. <laughs> Find us on Spotify as well. And uh, there's a lot of awesome, cool programming that you can check out. Even if you're just getting into All Japan, you're a fan of wrestling from different parts of the world. You're a big fan of AEW, WWE, New Japan, Stardom, uh, TJPW. We just want to say, you know, they, they've, they've got awesome coverage for all those other things. Matt, what are you working on for Chair Shot these days? All right. Uh, well, uh, if you just saw on the website, uh, my top 25 matches are done. They're all out and ready to go. Uh, I am planning on covering a new promotion. Uh, I have not decided what yet. As of right now, it's most likely going to be Ice Ribbon if I get more access to it. Uh, I'll be riding for All Japan again when I think when Suwama and Shotaro have their title match. I think that'll be my return to riding. For the for the for the promotion and for the website in that regard. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna fluctuate around with uh, different coverages and scheduling to make it uh, more simple and easy. But uh, there there'll be there'll be plenty on there as of right now. But yeah, those are my plans: Ice Ribbon, uh, a little bit more Joshi, and then Return of Old Japan with Shotaro and Suwama. Okay, awesome, Matt. And how can how can folks find you on uh, Twitter? They find you on Twitter, Facebook. How can they find you? Uh, you can find me uh, on Facebook. Um, this is look at Maverick Saprecone. I'm in the All Japan group, so you can find me there pretty easily. And you can find me on Twitter at Damien Phoenix Twelve. You'll find me on there. And that uh, yeah, those are only two places you can contact me. So that'd be good. Uh, but yeah, but I'm down to talking to anyone about anything wrestling related. So always give me a shout out. I'm happy to talk. Awesome. And of course, you can find me over at on Twitter, uh, Dave El Batarista. You can also find me on uh, Facebook, just uh, facebook.com forward slash Dave the Drummer 831. The music that you hear on the podcast is in part on my album from a couple years back so if you're a fan of uh, drums drumming uh then i you know give me a follow you know check me out give me a like see what i'm up to and i'm always up to making new music and working on new projects as well as uh, another podcast uh, the talking drum it's just you know talking with drummers and it's a really cool show uh we're looking to this is our fourth year no sorry fifth year now of uh, being on as a, uh, a YouTube, a TV show, 
podcast. You know, it's it's a, a big year for us. We're looking to close up. The, it's the last year of the podcast. We're on our final season. And so it's been a, a really interesting ride. We've talked with a, a couple of interesting cats and it's uh it's been it's been fun but uh you know my my heart has always been in uh japanese pro wrestling my heart's always been with all japan and i feel very good about this podcast and i enjoy doing it with matt and uh we just want to say thank you for checking us out following us and listening to the show and uh, if you like it and share it tell it with you know people that you think would dig it and who you think would like all japan you know it's a great way to get them exposed and get them to get over the language barrier because you can kind of catch them up with the podcast and while they're watching things are kind of spelt out a little bit for you so for matt and dave this is suama station and i am saying blue justice take care guys we'll see you next time